Welcome to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. A quick turnaround for both these sides as three different rain delays paused action last night for an hour and 43 minutes. Good news, nothing but sunny skies for the Brewers at Twins this afternoon in the finale of this two-game set at Target Field. Welcome inside our studios. I'm Sierra Santos and joining me this week we figured it's some game in Minnesota. Let's bring in our Minnesota girl. Jamie Hirsch of is course. back with us for the MLB <laughs> game of the week pregame show but uh, not to dismiss your twins mm -hmm. but we're going to talk a little brew crew first. Okay. The Brewers have won five straight against teams above 500. They beat the Blue Jays, the Rays, the Twins. Now they are going for the sweep. Yeah it is pretty impressive what the Brewers have done so far. In fact today Sierra they can reach the 50 win mark before the all-star break mm -hmm. which is something the crew's only done five other times since 1980 before pretty much everyone on that roster was alive probably everyone on that roster yeah I'm gonna I, I, that's a safe <laughs> guess yeah. I'm gonna say everyone on that roster <laughs> okay let's talk a little bit about scheduling because yeah. you know there's some tougher schedules there's some easier ones but both teams have had an easier go of it at their schedules this season so far the Brewers have played the second easiest schedule in the majors while the twins have played the fourth easiest this is a byproduct of their weaker divisions all yeah. right so but everyone else on this leads their divisions the only team that does not are the defending champion braves oh who by the way are currently a game and a half out behind the Ooh. mets don't tell our producer that uh big no. mets fan moses big. uh sorry yeah that, that's a, that's a pretty uh fun series that's going to be played yeah. this week as well all right so here are some things that you need to know about MLB's Game of the Week live on YouTube. Our game is streaming live all over the globe. And the best part is, it's free. After today, we are gonna have five more games during the regular season. So be sure to subscribe to the MLB YouTube channel to join the over three and a half million fans that enjoy our content. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna click the bell icon to receive notifications on upcoming games. And so YouTube TV subscribers can stream live in an MLB pop-up channel, as well as in 4K for 4K plus subscribers. But before we get to today's game, let's look back at what happened in yesterday's wet one in the Twin Cities where the Brewers were victorious. Towards right field, well struck back. Kepler looking up, it is 2-0 Milwaukee. Ninth home run of the year for Andrew McCutcheon. Willie Adamas puts a charge into one deep left field. It is up and it is gone. Willie Adamas, a two-out, two-run blast. His team high, 18th of the season. So with the win, the Brew Crew maintained their two-game lead over the Cardinals in the NL Central. Milwaukee has been in first place in all but nine days since April 24th. Wow. After today, they head to San Francisco to close out the first half. As for the Twins in the AL Central, their lead over the Indians is at three and a half games. Minnesota has been in first place for the vast majority of this season. They've beaten up on the reigning Central Division champs, the White Sox, going five and one. But they're actually 17 and 15 against the rest of the Central, including losing nine of the last 13 against the Guardians and the Tigers. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game, starting with Minnesota. Day game after night game, so a few changes here for the Twins. Byron Buck Buxton will actually lead things off with Carlos Correa and Jorge Polanco right behind him. Polanco, by the way, has six homers and is slugging nearly 700 in 12 games since coming off the I.L. The Twins have dropped four of their last five, but their bats here haven't really been the problem. In fact, they've averaged nearly six runs per game over that span, but their pitching just has not been good with an ERA approaching seven. So Joe Ryan certainly hoping to change that trend today. Yeah, you mentioned they lost four of their last five. Now, in three of those losses, Losses, it's been by two runs or fewer. So they're playing close games, yeah. but in that five game stretch, starting pitching has a 9.41 ERA, Ouch. and that's simply not going to get it done. All right, let's take a look at the Brewers lineup. Andrew McCutcheon is batting cleanup since June 5th. He's fourth in the senior circuit in average and third in on base percentage. Both he and Willie Adamas homered in Tuesday's game. Right now, the Brew Crew have the second most homers in the National League, trailing just the Braves. And actually, Adamas now has tied the franchise record for most homers before the All-Star break Ooh. by a shortstop. 
But he's That's been carrying good. the load. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, I always like to think, you know, maybe Miller Park has something to do with that. It is a more hitter-friendly ballpark. But Target Field has actually become a little more hitter-friendly over the past few years, too. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who wins the long ball game here today. Yeah, they went yard twice last night. So it's completely on brand <laughs> for them. Yeah, it is. And uh, Jorge Polanco, by the way, we mentioned him. Mm -hmm. He went yard last night as well um, and had 13 homers total this season. Not an all-star, but Luis Arise, um, who is an all-star, is actually going to be sitting out of the starting lineup today. So anyway, let's take a look at Target Field. The site of today's game It opened in 2010. It is the fourth youngest ballpark in the majors. Lone Depot Park in Miami, Truist Park in Atlanta, and Globe Light Field in Arlington are younger. One fan who will be a part of the YouTube broadcast this afternoon and interviewed by our very own Amy Gutierrez during the game is Kick Lee. He attends every Twins home game and paints every big moment immediately after it happens. Check out this so painting cool. of Byron Buxton right here. It's amazing. He's incredibly talented. So going to be pretty cool to see him and his work featured during this contest. Also pretty cool to see them work during the game. So our announcers, uh, Scott Braun and Yonder Alonzo, they're always pretty cool to listen to, right? Pretty they're out in they Minnesota. always have the coolest outfits. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, let's see what they have booth on baseball, today. The most stylish booth in baseball. Take it away, guys. You know what I love, aside from beautiful weather and no rain like they dealt with last night with three delays, but you know what else I love? Tell me. Watching young starters with great stuff. It's like they have the whole world ahead yeah. of them, and oh, that's yeah. what we're getting today with Ashby against Joe Ryan, who's a Rookie of the Year candidate, but as you watched some video, Aaron Ashby's got really good stuff on the Milwaukee side, too. Yeah, and, and talking to Consul, he said, I think this is going to be one of those guys who is going to be coming up as one of the great ones that Milwaukee already has, right? They have two or three guys that are absolutely filthy. Mm -hmm. Well, a guy like Ashby, he's on his way as well, so I'm excited about that. With Joe Ryan, though, it's intriguing, right? He's 92, 93 miles an hour blows it by people all the time and it's not so much to carry it's just the deceptiveness that he brings it's going to be a challenge especially today on a day game like this to go after both of these guys i can't wait to get into that yonder is going to explain why for example yeah joe ryan with a low velocity compared to most fastball can go right down the middle and get it by hitters so we'll go over that and the fact that the twins have not won but two all-star position players in their starting nine it's Luis arise and byron buxton can do it all even when and you look at the numbers this this year the batting average isn't there but he contributes in so many ways yeah. he can have quote a bad game at the plate and make a game saving catch. yeah he can save three three runs in, in one play right so we understand that maybe his average is not so much there or even the ability to run the bases or like stealing bags but with that being said though he's still slugging really really well and we know what he can do in the defensive side saving some runs for the Minnesota Twins exactly and for a rise not in the starting lineup could see him later on nothing wrong with him he does have pretty big splits in his career and it's a left-handed starter on the mound for the Brewers. But we will get into all of this coming up in just a bit on the pregame, taking you up to first pitch, early start, gorgeous day, no rain to mess with. They had, what, five-plus hours uh, yesterday? Let's do it. They're tired. We're not, okay? We'll see you <laughs> for game time. <laughs> okay, so usually we get, like, chains. Sometimes we get camo. Today we're getting matching YouTube polos, which I'm not, I'm not mad at it, guys. All right, I see you do your thing. All right, time for this afternoon's poll question. Who would you least like to face as a hitter? The Brewers' perennial all-star closer, Josh Hader, or the Twins rookie, Yoan Duran? We'll give you some numbers to back them up. Their whip is nearly equal. Well, Hader's K rate is higher, but here's one thing to consider on Minnesota's reliever. All-stars Jose Ramirez, Andrew Benatendi, Vlad Jr., Xander Bogarts, get this, Jamie, combined 0 4 10 wow. against Duran. He's got them figured out. I don't know how. All right, still to come on the MLB Game of the Week pregame show, we'll focus on other parts of each bullpen. Griffin Jacks of the Twins will join us in a bit. Well, Sarah Langs of MLB.com has interesting numbers on the Brewers. Devin Williams will also be joined by Taylor Betancourt of SportsStorm as this week's creator spotlight. And we always got our picks to click. Of course, we always got them. That's all right here on the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. Hey, baseball fans, live Major League Baseball games are back on YouTube. You'll be able to watch select live games throughout the regular season on YouTube free of charge. No fees or sign-up required. 
Here's how to find and watch the live games from your smart TV, computer, and phone. To watch from your smart TV, launch the YouTube app and search for MLB. Select the MLB channel and click the live game. To watch from your computer, go to youtube.com and search for MLB. This will take you to the MLB YouTube channel where the featured game will be playing live. To watch from a phone, open the YouTube app and search for MLB. Select the MLB channel and the live game will be the first video you'll see. These games will only be available on YouTube, so make sure you don't miss out. If you are logged into your YouTube account, set a reminder by selecting the game on the MLB YouTube channel and pressing Set Reminder. You'll receive a notification when the live game starts. Watch MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube at youtube.com slash MLB. Look at Joe Ryan getting warmed up there in the outfield, a beautiful target field. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. Well, Griffin Jacks has been a big part of the Twins' bullpen this year, especially over the past six weeks or so. Since Memorial Day, he's got a 1.80 ERA, and opponents are hitting just 164 against him. Griffin is kind enough to join us now after a late night at the ballpark last night. Now, Griffin, three different rain delays. This game didn't end until about 11.30 or so your time. How did you spend all that downtime? Like, are you a cards guy, or what do you do when you guys are just waiting around like that? Uh, yeah, it's just mostly hanging out in the clubhouse, messing around with the guys. There are little cards playing um, on the tables, but it's just mostly joking around. Uh, trying to keep the energy light, just knowing that we were about to be playing a five-hour game, so <laughs> how to keep it light. Yeah, not a lot of sleep in between these two games. You made your MLB debut 13 months ago. We mentioned that 180 ERA. What's been the reason for the turnaround, and how has your life changed since you got called up 13 months ago? Yeah, um, I think it was just a... Uh, uptick in a certain usage in some of my pitches and just developing a little bit more, fixing some mechanical issues to throw a little bit harder. But uh, I wouldn't say my life's changed that much. I try to not think of myself solely as a baseball player, but just trying to be the best person I can. And uh, my wife and I really harp on that. It's a really refreshing message and really important, right? To, to stay grounded through all the ups and downs that are certain to come in baseball. Okay, so you spent some time Absolutely. last year as a starter, but now we've mentioned you've transitioned really into a, a pretty dangerous part of the Twins bullpen. What would you say has been the biggest challenge in terms of changing how you prepare and maintain your arm strength and transitioning from that starter to reliever role? Yeah, I mean, it's all of that. Uh, I had to come up with a completely different routine and schedule. Uh, like you said, I was a starter last year, so I had a pretty specific regimen, five days in between each start. But now out of the bullpen, every single night, I got to be ready to go. Uh, and that was a learning challenge at first, but thankfully I had a little bit of spring training to learn. And uh, so far, I've just been trying to pick and choose from earlier this year with other guys that have been doing this a lot of times in their career. So uh, I've had a pretty nice support staff to help me out. Yeah, it's a different mindset for sure. Now, athleticism runs in the family. Your okay. father played in the NFL for a decade. How much football did you play when you were younger? I think I played maybe half a season. My, uh, <laughs> my mom really didn't want me to play too much. Uh, and thankfully, my dad really hasn't had a whole lot of injuries that have, you know, limited his life so far. You know, you hear all these horror stories about that happening nowadays. But, um, yeah, my mom was always pretty, uh, pretty careful of me playing football, didn't want me to get hurt. And I think, you know, she made the right decision. Okay, so you live in Arizona in the offseason. I'm from Arizona. I got to know, are you a Cardinals fan? And what do you think of Kyler Murray? <laughs> what a loaded question. Uh, no, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Cardinals fan for sure. Uh, my father did play for them uh, the last couple of years of his career, so they've been a fun team to follow, especially the last few years with Kyler Murray. I mean, he's just so dynamic at the quarterback position. So just, you know, they've been trying to rebuild around him a little bit, and you can see the pieces there. So it should be an interesting year for them. 
Well, in your off season, you can do some analyst work uh, for NFL yeah, exactly. stuff, right? <laughs> um, back to the diamond. Let's go back to the 4th of July. Big matchup with the White Sox, and you were on the mound for the rarely seen triple play that was started by Byron Buxton. In fact, it was the first ever 8-5 triple play in baseball history. So what was that like to be a part of, and what has it been like for you to play with Buxton out there in center? Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. You know, I, I'm in the mound right there during that game, and I know I got guys on base, no outs. So uh, I want to say that was on. Uh, I was part of the plan. You know, that was part of the pitch execution to get three outs right there and get me out of the jam. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, all goes to Byron. You know, what he does day in and day out in center field is truly a blessing uh, to have him on your team. And a little funny story, actually, he texted me back in April. Um, there was a little bit of miscommunication on a play in the outfield, uh, and, and he misjudged the ball. And he texted me, I think, like at 2 or 3 in the morning, just, you know, humbling himself down and apologizing. Wow. And I responded right back and said, listen, we, you have no idea how lucky we are to have you in center field on this team. And I know you're going to make a play some part of the year later uh, this season where you're going to save my butt. And we <laughs> laughed about that later that night. That's awesome. That is awesome, and that's the kind of guy you want as a teammate mm -hmm. for sure. All right, oh, since 100%. we're live on YouTube, we like to ask every guest what their favorite YouTube channel is or their favorite video. So what's your fave? Yeah, so since I've been uh, living in Arizona the past couple of years, uh, beautiful place to play golf in the mm -hmm. offseason, so I've been trying to get into it. So my favorite YouTube channel has uh, got to be me and my golf. You know, they do a pretty good job of uh, making it uh, – you know, pretty easy for a beginner to learn golf and just fundamentals, practices, and you know, little tech tips and techniques. So I've been trying to rely on them pretty heavily in the off season. Nice. Real quick before we let you go, uh, is it a special day at Target Field with the hat, or is this just one of your go-to hats with the camo? No, yeah, this is uh, just kind of the go-to practice hat, you know, before games. I can sweat in it, and it's not going to get ruined for any sort of jersey <laughs> we got here. So it's just my sort of day in, day out hat. All right. Well, thanks so much for the time and uh, good luck the rest of the way. I've told you off camera, but I'm a huge Twins fan from Minnesota. So, you know, I'll be cheering for you. And uh, we're just here for a good game here between the Brewers and the Twins on YouTube. Thanks so much for the time. All right. Thanks, guys. A lot of fun. Time for the creator spotlight. Today we're looking at Taylor Betancourt from Sports Storm. This channel focuses on the analytical and storytelling side of baseball with everything from current events to stories of the past. Now Taylor's favorite team is the Padres and he joins us right now. Hey Taylor, welcome on in. Since we just described your YouTube channel, tell us more about Sports Storm. Well, uh, it's a channel where I make video essays on pretty much anything I find interesting that's baseball related. So it can be something like, um, I re recently uploaded something on Justin Verlander, how great he's doing this season, looking at his analytics. Um, also did a video on the 2012 AL MVP debate between Trout and Cabrera. And it, it could be something as obscure as like, um, uh, let's see, from 50 some years ago, there was a baseball scandal in Japan and I just found it one day and I was like, yeah, I'll make a video on this. This looks pretty interesting. And that's what happened there. So um, just anything I find interesting that's baseball related, I'll likely make a video on it. And that's the beauty of YouTube, right? You can find basically anything you want out there. And it sounds like your channel has had great success. Okay. so. Personally, you're a big Padres fan, I understand. So thanks to the Dodgers getting hot lately, the Padres having a bit of a struggle, they've started to fade in the standings. Do you think the Friars still have a shot to run down the Dodgers this season or maybe better yet, take them out in the postseason? Um, well, the way the team's looking right now, I'm not too confident, but it doesn't mean there isn't a scenario where, they, where the Padres can't beat the Dodgers. Um, back in the first half of 2021, the, the Padres had the upper hand on the Dodgers. So really with Tatis hopefully coming back, more players coming off the injured list, and just whatever A.J. Preller does at the deadline, you really know, never know what he's going to do. There's certainly a scenario where the Padres can get hot and face the Dodgers in October and come out on top. Now talking about a guy who missed a little bit of time, your boy Manny Machado has done all he's can this first half to keep San Diego with the fourth best record in the NL. Is he your pick for NL MVP or do you have somebody else in mind? Well, it's really between him and Paul Goldschmidt. As much as I want to give it to Machado, I, I don't really want to have any biases. I would give a slight, slight edge to Paul Goldschmidt, but it's Man, Paul, Paul Goldschmidt's really just hitting out of his mind right now. 
and it really he's hitting like he did back in Arizona which you haven't really seen too much in St. Louis the only x factor is Paul Goldschmidt's defense which has been unchar uncharacteristically not that great this year so it really if there's this there is a scenario where if Machado can get hot even better uh, with the bat I think Machado can come out on top, but if it ended right now, I think Paul Goldschmidt narrowly takes the award. Yeah, it's going to be a close race to be sure. Uh, we've got an exciting next week or so around Major League Baseball. So far, four guys have signed up to challenge Pete Alonso in the home run derby coming up in just five days in L.A. So what do you think? Do you think guys like Ronald Acuna Jr., Albert Pujols, Juan Soto, and Kyle Schwarber have what it takes to challenge the Mets slugger? Or do you think we're going to see a three-peat? Well, Pete Alonso is definitely a tough guy to beat, as we've seen in recent years. But I really want to see—I really want to see some new blood come in. And if there's someone I want to see, it would be Julio Rodriguez. Um, he's the most exciting player, most exciting rookie in the league right now, leading all rookies in home runs, I believe. So he's definitely someone that can take that crown. And I just hope there's a scenario in the future where. We see all these young guys um, play in the same home run derby. So Tatis, Soto, Acuna, Franco, Guerrero, Rodriguez, a couple other guys. And it would just make for some great baseball. Okay, finally, who are you looking forward to seeing the most in the All-Star game on Tuesday? Definitely Joe Musgrove. Um, he's just he's just been having a fantastic season and it's great seeing Manny Machado get the starting third base spot but he's been in the all-star game so much at this point and I am I am happy to see Shohei Otani hopefully he can hit and pitch but seeing Joe Musgrove as a as a guy from San Diego as a guy who's grown up as a Padres fan it's awesome seeing the Padres ace be recognized and have a true chance of winning the Cy Young so I'm really happy for Joe Musgrove as are all baseball fans everywhere. Great story he has been. Thanks so much for the time, Taylor, and uh, good luck with everything going forward. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, even though Luis Arise is out of the lineup, Sarah Langs has a good nugget on how he puts the ball in play regularly. That's all when we come back on the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. Fly ball deep right. Yelich's first of the year is a grand slam. The gorilla is off his back. <laughs> a blast, a no doubter on a 1 0 pitch. 429 feet away, his fourth career grand slam. Derek Sheldon stuck with the right hander. Christian Yelich made him pay. And then some. Suzuki back. Grown man home run by Rowdy Telez. And the Brewers have the lead. Bucking a pretty strong win. Blowing out the left. Well, you tried to get into that bullpen early. The Brewers able to do it in the sixth. And Rowdy Telez gives the Brewers a lead. First one of the season for Rowdy. And that was no cheapy. Central leading Brewers getting warmed up for this one. They've got a two game edge on the Cardinals right now. They're going to try to extend their lead before the All Star break rolls around in just a couple days. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show. Fans watching our YouTube Game of the Week now have their choice of listening experience. Moments before first pitch, simply click the gear icon in your player, choose audio tracks, and select either the primary broadcast or take your pick 
of the home and away radio calls. Each is available on your favorite device once the game is underway. It's time to look deeper into this afternoon's game using StatCast powered by Google Cloud. And we welcome in MLB.com, Sarah Langs. Welcome back to the show, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. So naturally, when we talk Brewers, we're going to talk pitching, whether it's the reigning Cy Young winner, Corbin Burns, or one of the top relievers in the game, Josh Hader. But one man who was missed last October by Milwaukee could be even more dominant than Hader, and that is Devin Williams. How tough, though, has it been to hit him this season? It has been impossible to square him up. So he has yet to allow a barrel so far this season. What is a barrel? So that's one of our stat cast numbers that tells you a batted ball with the ideal combination of launch angle and exit velocity. So we have hard hit, which is 95 plus, but barrel takes that even further and talks about not just the ideal exit velocity, but also the ideal approach angle there or launch angle. So the only guys in baseball with at least 50 batted balls allowed who have yet to allow a barrel are him and Wade Miley. Devin Williams has been squared up 60 times. None of those have been a barrel. That just tells you how difficult it is to hit against him. And by the way, he also gets a ton of swing and miss. He is just so dominant, and as you said, really missed last October but make a huge impact this year. You said impossible, and I doubted you for a second, but yeah, you actually mean it. All right, on the other side is a man who has been a revelation this season and named to his first all-star team on Sunday is twin second baseman Luis Arise. He's the major league hitter, but he's also putting the ball in play a lot. How good has Arise been this season, though? He has been, as you said, a revelation and so much fun to watch. And as you mentioned, he puts the ball in play constantly. In fact, he is the lowest whiff rate in all of baseball. It is under 8%. Whiff rate is the number of times that you miss when you take a swing. So when he swings, almost 92% of the time, he is making contact there. And that is part of how he is leading the majors in batting average. We talk so much about sluggers and home runs are so much fun to watch, of course. But it's also really fun to watch Guy hitting close to 350. He comes into the day at 347. And just seeing him help his team by being on base so much is really, really awesome. And not swinging and missing like that is incredibly impressive, especially in today's game, when you have guys like Devin Williams who are up there trying to get you to swing and miss and usually succeeding. Well deserving of that trip to Los Angeles. Always the best. Thanks so much again, Sarah. Thank you so much. Always fun to chat. With that, it's time for Picks to Click, presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. And with both teams in first place, we thought it'd be fun to pick who is going to win their division. So, Sierra, are you going with Chalk and have the Brewers winning the NL Central, or do you think the cards are going to run them down? Okay, here's my thing. I don't bet on baseball anymore because I work at MLB Network, right? <laughs> so, my thing is I'm going with what's going to give me the most money. Okay, so the Brewers... Yeah, they got a little narrow lead. Cardinals are two games back. Brewers are at minus 230. Why would I ever pick the Brewers in this circumstance? I'm going Cardinals plus 175 because that's what's going to give you the best return on your buck. Okay, so I'm on the hot seat for this, but should I, should I, I do I even ask Mrs. Minnesota? <laughs> Who is going to win the AL Central? Uh, is this up for, is this a question? No, I mean, funny story. Our producer comes in here to get our picks ahead of time. He's like, I got to get you the exact odds of who's going to win the AL. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm from Minnesota. I'm going to pick the Twins, obviously, <laughs> to win the AL Central. I don't even care. We'll show their odds if, for all those people out there. But I, I got to go hometown, right? Minnesota, all the way, going to win the AL Central. I hope their bullpen can get a little short up and that starting pitching can turn things around in order to make them a contender. But I'm going all the way. AL Central going to the Twins. With that, we take a look at the results to our poll earlier today. Who would you least like to face as a hitter, Josh Hader or Johan Duran? And it is overwhelmingly in favor of the Brewers also. Josh Hader, no surprise there. Yeah, I'm not surprised at that at all. 
But this is going to be a great game. You know, all these games that are leading up right now to the All-Star break, they have meaning, and especially for these two teams we just mentioned, they're division leaders. They're trying to extend their lead a little bit longer. So now we are going to get you out to Target Field. Order battle of the game. Woo. Scott, yonder, guys, have fun. Summer in the Twin Cities, it's nice. Yes, back to the Midwest for us for the border battle, one of the best series out there, interleague style. A day of division leaders, high upside starters, and a much nicer forecast today than last night. Three delays for them yesterday. We're good to go. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube with the NL Central's top squad, the Milwaukee Brewers, taking on tops in the AL Central, the Minnesota Twins at Target Field. Hello, everyone. Sunshiny day here for us in Minneapolis. Scott Braun along with the former all-star Yonder Alonzo and hello to all of you watching worldwide on YouTube. Are we going to be okay? Because yesterday it was over five hours, rain delay city. It looks really nice out it's there. It's beautiful. Let's go. Let's do this. So let's start also with the young, exciting starters that have big time stuff on both sides because I know you and me have been talking about this all week long. People know about them, but globally, I think we need to introduce what Aaron Ashby brings to the table and not not just what Joe Ryan brings to the mix as far as his numbers and his stuff yonder, but also he is one of the most interesting men in Major League Baseball already. I mean, this guy is tailor-made for commercials. So can I take you through the Joe Ryan experience? Let's go. Because he was a swimmer back in the day, played a little water polo, and said that actually helped him become who he is as a pitcher. He's a world traveler. Oh, look at that. He's a ladies man. I mean, this guy truly does it all. Oh, by the way, about a year ago, he's an Olympian playing for Team USA, winning a silver medal. Huge part of that roster. Finds out during that time period he's traded to the Twins. Fast forward to opening day. He's their starter. That's all in like a few years time. This guy truly represents one of the most interesting men in baseball. And then at the start of the season, he was fantastic. He's dipped off a little bit lately, but coming off the COVID IL. Yeah, look, I, I think after the COVID IL, his team from June 14th has lost three of his last five starts. They're the reasons for that, I think, is just velocity. I think his velocity has gone down a little bit. But talking to Baldelli, he's, he mentioned how his stuff plays at a different level, right? When we talk about velocity, you might not, you might just see 88 to 92, but it actually plays up to par. And you're going to see a lot of lace swings. You're going to see a lot of foul balls. And you're going to see a lot of competitions. What I love most about Joe Ryan is his ability to, under the pressure, what I like to call those high leverage situations, he is phenomenal. All right? Guys are just hitting 100, 154 average on him. I think for me, when you get in trouble like that, he's able to come off of those innings and, and do his thing. I, I think he's going to be just fine. Yeah, that fastball is deadly. You'll see that the opponent batting average very tough against it. Although, if you can get a hold of one like we've seen from Willie Adamas throughout the season, the ball goes a long way off his bat, yeah. including yesterday's homer. Yeah, look, and I think talking to Craig Council about it, how does he do it? Well, he just hits the ball up in the air. This guy is not a guy who is going to hit ground balls. He knows what he's there for. He knows what he's got to do. And kind of a guy like Byron Buxton, right, where they're slugging at a high rate. Look, the last 28 games, he's got 27 RBIs. That's pretty good when it comes to the National League and RBIs in a month. But he is just a, a ray of sunshine. And what I mean by that is, like, in the clubhouse every single day, he's happy. He's full of positivity. I know the Brewers have had a lot of injuries. But this guy is a leader in that clubhouse and on the field. Yeah, every day is a good day for Adamas, and the team loves him. Did you say Byron Buxton? Ooh, Do you want to yeah. cover the All-Star? Let's go. He's in the lineup today for the Twins. What does he bring to the table? Everything in gold. So what is the value of a buck? Gas prices are high. You know I'm more of, like, a crypto, I'll-go guy. But... Byron Buxton has tools for days, and they're banking on him. 
Yeah, they are. They're definitely definitely banking on him. I, I just love his ability to slug, right, when we talk about the 541 slugging. But right now in 2022, he is number one when it comes to breaking balls and slugging percentage at 615 rate. I mean, if you throw this guy a breaking ball, especially with runners in scoring position, he is going to hurt you. And, and look, in that last 162 games that he's played, a 261 average, 55 homers, 101 RBIs. Ladies and gentlemen, that is doing damage every single day. And let's not forget, not only can he do it on offense, but he can do it on defense. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. This catch, I want to just broaden the view, was absurd, and you need to watch it to believe it. The concentration, not colliding with his teammate, coming up with the baseball, smashing into the wall. It's like a no-look catch. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And look, since 2020, he's got 26 defensive run saves. That's number one in all of outfielders. This guy can absolutely do it all when it comes to defense. We talked about if he goes over four, he can still save you some runs out there in center field. That is very valuable. Makes an impact on a daily basis. He is a dynamic talent. He is a dynamic entertainment value guy as well as we bring in our dynamic talent, Amy G. For more on the value of a buck in terms of celebrations, Amy G, fair to say it that way? Fantastic intro. Thank you so much. Yeah, home run celebrations. They've been really fun to watch this season, guys. And I'm just going to throw my vote in that the Twins win the most sentimental home run celebration in that air horn pull. The origin, of course, Byron Buxton, their all-star. It is a favorite childhood memory of his. He grew up in a very small town in Georgia where his dad was a truck driver. Little Byron would run out front every day waiting for his dad to come home. After driving all night long, he'd pull a fake air horn and in return, his father would pull the real horn. Now, he said the impetus was actually his own children are pulling a fake train horn, so it reminded him of this memory. He said he brought it to the team several reasons. It's a great memory he gets to relive all the time. It reminds the guys to have some fun in this game that's a grind, but he also said it is a symbolism of gratitude to his dad, Felton, and Carrie for all the hard work that they put into getting Byron to this point. I said, what does dad think about this special private Buxton family memory? that's now trending on social media and he said his dad loves it share away gentlemen Amy G I love that there's some depth to the celebration he's going to lead off in the bottom half of the first we'll intro the Brewers starting nine in the top half of the inning and first pitch time in Minneapolis coming at you globally on YouTube Gorgeous day for baseball at Target Field. This place is filling up for the border battle. Plenty of Brewers fans in the house, too. You ready? It's supposed to be hard, man. These trophies is our scars. Ain't nobody won't give me so take it for stars. Let's
Let's do this at Target Field in Minneapolis. It is the game of the week live on YouTube as the Milwaukee Brewers at 49 and 39 take on the Minnesota Twins 48 and 41. Milwaukee 6-3 winners yesterday. This is their starting lineup. Still no Christian Yelich dealing with a mid-back issue. Some tightness yesterday. He was a late scratch, so Juan will lead off, followed by Adonis, who homered yesterday. Telez third. McCutcheon looking to make it three games in a row with a long ball. Narvaez, the all-star from a year ago, is going to DH. Arias at third. And Peterson, Caratini, and Jonathan Davis to round out the nine for Craig Council's Milwaukee Brewers first place in the National League Central going up against the rookie. One of the better rookie starters in baseball this year in Joe Ryan with the low threes ERA. And this is the first time the Brewers are seeing him, which could be a problem when you're dealing with such a unique delivery. Yeah, it is. And, and we talked about this earlier, you and me, Scott. When you get a feel for a pitcher, right, that you see more and more and more throughout a year, these guys, they only play each other four times a year. So for me, it's an advantage to Joe Ryan than it is to the offensive side for the Brewers. And, and when we talk about the scouting report with Joe Ryan, it, it, he's got a pitch to walk Rodgers. And what I mean by that is you're not going to see the 96, 97 mile an hour fastball, but you are going to see a sneaky fastball. And what I mean by that is his breaking ball stuff is going to be very deceptive because of that fastball. It's a low quarter type of, type of slot. The changeup is going to be a key. But look, surprising the, heat, the, the hitters with the heater late in count, especially up in the zone, will be a huge leverage for Mr. Ryan. This will be his 14th start of the season. ERA a bit over four in his last eight starts. His first five outings of the year was about a one and a half ERA. Yeah, he was nasty. I mean, and, and, and look, I, I, it's, it happens right throughout the year where at times it, you kind of get that little bit of a dead arm or, or that bad luck. Um, and it just takes a, a good outing or, or, or a good performance, something like today where Definitely the advantage is going to be on Ryan. Uh, how do he go about his business and, and, and you know attack these hitters. Colton Wong is going to lead the way for Milwaukee. Yeah for Joe Ryan two starts ago apparently was some of the best stuff they've seen from him in his young major league career. And here we go live on YouTube today the Brewers Woo! taking on the twins and he pumps that trademark fastball down the pipe for strike one. But last time around for Ryan, that was last Wednesday, the sixth against the White Sox. The command was a bit off the mark. Four innings, three runs, five hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Took him 85 pitches to go through four frames. Yeah, and I, and I think with with Ryan, that's what you're going to see a lot. A lot of foul balls, a lot of balls that, that guys think they have a good beat on when it comes to the swing wise, but they're just underneath a little bit. And when you face a guy like that, you know, it takes, I would like to say, six, seven, eight at bats to get a feel for a guy like this when the ball's jumping at you. Although it's 92, 91, 93 miles an hour, it just still jumps, it's still got life on it. And you really need to use that top hand heavy to be able to adjust your, your swing to hit the baseball. I like that pitch right there. That changeup for me, I, I think that changeup is going to be playing not only now in this start, but I, I think for the rest of the year. If he can command that change about times, I think we're going to see a better Joe Ryan, especially in the strikeout rate where, where you're going to see more whiffs. You're going to see him using that slider more down and up, down and in on lefties. I, I think for me is phenomenal when you look at this guy and you look at guys nowadays, Scotty, where it's 96, 97, and they have the, the, the whiff rate. Well, this guy, he certainly has it just a little bit low, slower in velocity. It was a rare curveball that you'll see from him. And now on the 2 2. Oh, nice catch. Yeah. Nice catch. Oh, bring your glove. Fan in a Joe Mauer jersey, which gives me a perfect opportunity to mention that the Twins legend is going to hang out with us later on in this game in the booth. I only I really have one serious question to ask. You got to get over. <laughs> and, and, and he will. Miranda steps on the bag to retire <laughs> Colton Wong. Quick, what's your question? I, I want to ask him about his studio. He has a he has a studio. 
know? A music studio? A music studio. Oh, I'm in for that. Ask him about that. We'll get to it. StatCast 3D, powered by Google Cloud. This is Joe Ryan's arsenal. Fastball heavy, because like you mentioned, it's tough to square up. Yeah, absolutely. But with that comes the slider, the changeup, and the curveball. I think we're going to see all the pitches today. Look for this guy right here to jump him early on. Sees a fastball. He's going. He did it yesterday. And his ball won to Willie Adamas, riding a five game extra base hit streak. Tops on the team in home runs. It was a two out, two run homer yesterday to make it 5 2 Milwaukee. And this one is on a line into a glove. Polanco has it, four out number two. How about Willie, though, man? Team in the clubhouse is like all smiles. Hey, what's up, Yonder? It's it's like it's nine in the morning, dude. And he's like, he's ready to rock and roll. He's ready to win. He's ready to have a day, especially like the one they had yesterday. It was a long day, right? You're expecting guys are going to be a little bit slower, kind of getting going. Not this guy. This guy was ready to rock. So 6:40 local time start yesterday, and I'm watching in the hotel room. We're at 10:10, and it's the sixth inning, resuming after a third rain delay. It was the first delay that the Brewers dealt with the whole year because, of course, their home games never have that problem with the retractable roof. Raddy Telez takes strike one down the middle. I hate it. I, I just hate it. Rain delays. It was awful. What do you do? You, you don't know what to do. That's the problem. <laughs> Andrew McCutcheon, who homered yesterday, was asked post game on Brewers TV about what he does during the delay. And he goes, I'm a locomotive. Once I get going, I can't stop. Yeah. I, a lot of guys go into the batting cage. A lot of guys like to take some swings, be in the gym. Rowdy pops that one up. And it's the left fielder Kirloff to make the play and sit down the side three up three down to begin our afternoon in Minnesota. We'll introduce the starting nine for the hometown twins next. Byron Buxton will lead the way for the Minnesota Twins. He's the DH this afternoon. The rest of the starting lineup looks like this. Correa Polanco has five home runs this month already. Second best in the American League. Kyle Garlick gets the start with the lefty on the mound. Miranda as well over at first. Urshela at third. Jeffers will catch. Kirilov in left. And Celestino will round out the nine. Mostly right-handed hitters against Aaron Ashby, who's coming off a win against the Pirates on Friday. Five innings, two runs, three hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Only touched up on a Diego Castillo home run. You like what you see on video from him. Why? Yeah, look, I, I think the numbers are very deceptive, and the reason for that is power, power stuff. We're talking about 63 innings and 76 strikeouts. That is, uh, it's telling me that he's got the potential to be one of the those guys that the Milwaukee Brewers are going to definitely depend on coming into the postseason. Yeah, stuff-wise, it's all there for Aaron Ashby. You'll see sinker, slider, changeup, curveball, just sprinkling in a few four-seam fastballs. 
Yeah, and it's explosive. I mean, it comes out of the hand hot. He, he's got a really good spin and slider. He likes to throw it to lefties and righties, uh, as we can see here today. I, I want to say there's only one lefty in the lineup, but this guy, man, he, he's got some electric stuff. And when I look at him, I got to give a lot of credit to the catchers uh, for the Milwaukee Brewers. They've done a phenomenal job with this staff all year round. Your curve right there, huh? It's a whiff. That's and he's really been nice. And, and we know Byron has been absolutely slugging against breaking balls. That was a good breaking ball right there, but you can see him. He kind of had him tinkered because of that 96 mile an hour fastball that he was respecting. Ouch. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I'm not okay. We're gonna keep going. Oh, the life of a catcher, huh? Also, mic'd up content is a beautiful thing. Oh man. You know who's mic'd up for us today? Who is? Andrew McCutcheon. Ooh. What do they call him? Uncle? What is it? Uncle? He's got a. He's, yeah, Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry. Is it Uncle Larry? Yeah, Uncle Larry. I know Uncle Mike. Michael Brandon. I wish I could talk to him. Uncle Larry, <laughs> what's up, Emmy? <laughs> uh, we're going to have some good content from Kutch today. I remember going to Pittsburgh when he was there. And he had some phenomenal years for five years with, with Uncle Larry, Mr. McCutcheon. But what I remember the most is that, you know, he had the dreads and, and it was like the Pirates of the Caribbean theme and over there in Pittsburgh. And it was just electric to see when he would come up to bat. The whole crowd was all about it. Oh, man, he was phenomenal during those years uh, in Pittsburgh. And Buxton's down on strikes. That's a good change up right there. That's Why a good change down. Up. Yeah, that's a good change up right there. Look, we know about his velocity. We understand his spin, but I think his change up is going to be the key to getting these right handers out. Look, we know the explosiveness is 96, 98 miles an hour. The strike one, I think, for him is going to be his best friend. The reason for that is because he's going to have hitters at all times in, 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 in so much of a, of a panic mode. And he's got to continue to use his spin with his slider and his change up like we saw there, especially with, when, when he's ahead of the count. Using those counts are going to be crucial for him. First pitch swing and Carlos Correa dunks one into center, and it's the first base runner of the afternoon for either side. Carlos understanding the velo is there, understanding that he's got to attack him early on if he sees a fastball. Carlos Correa, he, he's, he any fastball Carlos Correa sees, it is automatic swing. He loves to hit the fastball, and man, as he made a living hitting the fastball. He's one career. of the best in the business in that category. Oh yeah. That's a nice wake up call. First pitch. He's Knock. on it. <laughs> Textbook in the center. Big smile. And pass the baton to Jorge Polanco. A hot power Ooh. bat lately after a slow slugging start to the season. Entering today prior 12 games he's homered in six of them. Yeah, and he's slugging 674 too from the after coming off from the IL. He's got power. Back tightness was the issue. His first IL trip of his career. And he returned on June 28th. He's lit up since. 33 home runs last year, too. This right here, this count right here, this 1 1 count, this will let me know where Ashby's at in regards to winning these counts. If he's able to win these counts, he's 1 1 counts, a guy with explosive stuff, a, a guy that if he throws a breaking ball here to sneak one in, can tell me a lot about him. Change up. He went with the change up there. I, I think the 1 1 counts are very crucial for him. And the reasons I say that is because his stuff is so explosive that if he gets ahead of hitters, guys are just going to be on panic mode, right? And now he can expand in the strike zone. You saw him throw a 2 1 breaking ball. Will he do it again? One hitter. Spinner. Peterson doesn't have to move much. Out number two.
This is what you're working with if you're Aaron Ashby. StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. There's the sinker, the slider, the change up, the curve, just a touch of the four seam. Yeah, we talked about it, the sinker slider. I mean, it's going to be a weapon. I really like the change up, but that sinker slider is going to be the key on how to attack these hitters. And now Kyle Garlick. He entered the game Woo! yesterday in right field in the seventh. This is his specialty day, though. Mm -hmm. He hits left-handed pitching very well. 318 this year in 44 at bats against Southpaws. Five homers, 11 RBIs. You know, he's like in the movie Troy when when they call. What is it when they call the captain Woo! calls Athena? Come fight this guy. This is like that call right there of Kyle Garlic. The lefty's coming up. Garlic, come on in. We need you to take care of this lefty. <laughs> late in games, too, He's sometimes, ready. right? Yeah. Today he gets the start, but lefty late in games. Garlic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the very specific weapon. Oh, yeah. We saw him today early in the cage, and I mean, it was, what, 10 in the morning, and this guy was. Full on, full gear, ready to rock and roll off the machine. And I'll tell you what, man, he hit a thousand off that machine. <laughs> he did not get out. <laughs> he was on fire. You got a good sweat going when you're not playing every day. That's what you got to do. Crayon first, garlic fourth batter in the home first for Minnesota. There was not one machine, one pitching machine I did not like. I always thought hit at least a, at least 500 off of him. I was, uh, I was, I would get out. Oh, one more, one more, one more, <laughs> one more came out to be like 20 more swings. Felt good. I, I beat you up a little bit. Now we're good. <laughs> the ultimate confidence boost. <laughs> Absolutely. And you loved pitching machines and being in the cage. Oh yeah. Your gym rat. Gym rat. Check oh, on Correa. Going. Correa was leaning. Correa was leaning. Correa doesn't steal much, but when he goes, he pitches spots, and he's pretty sure he's going to get him. Two two counts are the best counts to go on. Might see a breaking ball here. Counts full. Let's get some YouTube comments in there. Kobe G. Ashby, good ground ball pitcher. Good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Helping my cause here. That's right. You get swing and miss, but also induces plenty of ground balls. And you can see they're loaded up on the left side against Garlic to pull. Challenge him right here. 3 2 heater. Got him. Uh, slider. Good That's pitch. the swing and miss pitch. Two strikeouts in the first for Ashby and a scoreless opening frame. Andrew McCutcheon leading off the second for Milwaukee. The power bat is hot, and so is the mic. Morning game, baby. Morning. I was about to say, borderline morning game in the show. Morning. Feel like morning. Oh, man. 
Ah! Ah! Come on, buddy! Hey! 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 hey. Amazing. You know I like to pick out the best <laughs> quotes. Come on, buddy. You got this. He turns 36 in October. Morning game. Look at the line in the last 23 for Kutch. 315, 5, and 13. Home runs in each of his last two games. Popper left side. And that's Gio Urshela to haul it in. That's a big league problem, and he just yeah. wants that. He wants it back completely. You're going to see a lot of those, though, with that rising fastball. Although it doesn't rise that much, just the angle that is coming off his hand. A lot of pop ups, not so many ground balls. Once again, it takes a little bit. And how about that view? Look at that. That's Look not that yonder, by the way. <laughs> that is another member of our team today, Kickley. Famous local artist who is documenting the entire season for the Minnesota Twins. More info on him later. That's awesome. I have a new nickname for him, too. I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. Oh. Ball one to Omar Narvaez. Andy Warhol? Or, or, or Andy like Baseball. That, huh? I was gonna, just going to say quickly <laughs> because, I mean, he's racking up five paintings per game. How about that seat? Now that would take me five that? months. Five months. I mean, he is quick. That. He is doing it. He's relaxed. Look Love at that. It. That was today. It's not like he started that yesterday. There's the high cheese from Ryan. I, I, I was always a sucker to to writing uh, to painting like baseball fields. You know, when I was at school with mm -hmm. kids, you know, I was paying attention in school. But if you give me a good piece of paper, I can I can draw really good infield, really good outfield. That's what I was. That's what I was in for. That's a hidden talent I did not know about. We're yeah. going to have to get that displayed at some point. Yeah. You're going to have to bring some show and tell next hey, week. I'll bring my crayons. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my crayons. Now, does he have a a, a glove? Specific to catch glove? a foul ball. Uh, catch a foul ball, oh, maybe I don't know. I like the hat though. Bucket hat is a, is a must. Swing and a miss. Narvaez goes down. First K of the day for Joe Ryan. It's a good fastball. See how it's, it's got that spin. It's got that riser where most balls are going to run away from you. That ball kind of just rides a little bit, stays in the zone. I liked that last look at the elbow. Mm -hmm. It's very low during the delivery. And there it is again, 92. How often have we already seen this? We talked about this all morning long. He will work very often in the middle quadrant of the zone, which most pitchers are taught to avoid. For Joe Ryan, it's OK. Yeah, no, I think for him, he understands this type of stuff as he has, and, and, and as well with his battery mate. He sees it until guys adjust, until guys understand what, what they need to try to do. He's just going to continue to pound the zone. He's got a he's got a good rhythm going right now. He, he's got that. Okay, give me the ball and let's go. Give me the ball and let's go. I mean, he really hasn't been trying to do anything different but just throw his heater into the zone. And guys, for some reason, are continuing to be late on it. This is a situation for a hitter as well where. You really want to get on top of the baseball. You want to say, hey, my first at bat, I want to try to hit the ball on the ground and make it a point. It's not about driving the baseball or maybe hitting a line drive. It's about being on top of the baseball, and hopefully that adjustment works. Urias is going to foul that one to the seats. Beautiful stadium, great crowd. Nothing better, huh? And a good mix. Which I'm fine with. Brewers fans travel well. They love to tailgate. This is more of your morning tailgate if you're getting involved. But I think one of our YouTube creators is actually in the ballpark today. Yes, Sports Gaming Universe just now got into the park. So many Brewers fans in town, LOL. Arias is straightened up, and that's going to do it for the second. Same result. 
with two strikeouts this time in the inning for Joe Ryan. The stuff is picking up. Back to back punch outs of Narvaez and Arias to close the book on the Brewers in the top half of the second. into the home second at Target Field and our first poll question is one of my favorites. We're looking for the best dugout celebrations in Major League Baseball because the Brewers have multiple antics. It's ringing the bell. It's the infinity gauntlet. We saw the Blue Jays recently on YouTube. They've got the, what do you call it? It's a jacket, but it's a uh, barrio. 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 Okay. barrio. The, the Red Sox with the shopping cart. This is a new one, and it's one of my favorites, too. The Padres, maybe we can explain that a little bit as well. Hi. Taking photos all year long in the dugout as Ashby starts Miranda with a strike. So here we go. Which team has the best dugout celebration in Major League Baseball? You have comments if you want to vote for something else, but we're well, giving you those four. I mean, I'm biased. I like the Polaroid, right? The yes. Timer, uh, I think it's really Polaroid. unique because then they're going to use all of those photos. Yeah, they're they're putting them all. They're going to auction them off. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think that's pretty cool. And but you know what happens with all these things? It. What? The celebration. It's never about like a good play or a strike off of the pitcher. <laughs> it's always about the homer. Yeah. Right. All these celebrations are always about the homer. When are we going to have something okay. where? You know, it's a strikeout, and you ring the bell or something, you know, <laughs> for the boys. It's pitchers, man. It always tilts to the long ball. We were joking with Craig Council about that this morning because the bell was supposed to be for baseball-y plays. Right. Hustle, great defensive play. That was Quentin Berry, the first base coach, unveiling that a couple months ago. It eventually just turns into a home run bell. Yeah. Time. <laughs> it's funny too, the guys that usually create these things are either coaches like this or pitchers. And it, it's always for the hitters. I, I see where you're going. You know plenty of pitchers. You, you have many friends the in the pitchers, league. Man. You need to tell one of them about your idea. I, I'm all in. I know. I, I one, hear two. You. I hear you. Here's my one case against that. You know, a strikeout's more of like a quote negative play. I think the offense might be a little bit perturbed if they hear a bell every time they're striking out especially if it's like a 15k game between the starter and the reliever where a home run it's loud you're expecting the antics and the fireworks but I see where you're going anyway yeah. so your choice is Polaroid camera I'm going to double down with you just because of the uniqueness and I like it tied to a cause this year as the count runs full to Miranda Amy G where are you going on the poll question? And I know you have some more to the story for us too, right? We do. Oh, <laughs> well, I have a lot on that Infinity <laughs> Gauntlet. I am partial to Toronto's home run jacket. I just love how it includes people from all over the world. It's not just their team, but guys, the Infinity Gauntlet, right? Well, they stepped it up a notch from ringing the bell. Now they wear that glove with all of the Infinity Stones. If you're a Marvel geek like I am, you know that that gauntlet symbolizes the all-powerful. It's actually 
actually not the original reason for getting the glove. Hunter Renfro, Andrew McCutcheon having a discussion, looking for a way to keep things light when the guys would hit the ball well, but they hit it to a glove and then they'd look at the ump. Yonder, you know about this, and look at his fist and he closed it because you're out. That's so right. McCutcheon ordered the glove and all the stones as a way to lighten the mood. But the Infinity Gauntlet, it's taken on a life of its own. As you guys mentioned, the home run always takes over. And now the most powerful brewer of the moment dons it to ring the bell. <laughs> I love it. I also love the fact that Amy G is a big Marvel fan. I, I didn't know that. I, I like I to learn about Amy. the crew that we're hanging out with each week. Like Wanna want favorite movie? That's what I want to know from Amy. From Amy? Okay. Yeah. Miranda struck out. Third K of the afternoon for Ashby, and now he's working on Gio Urshela. Too long. Gio was unique oh, poor Gio. yesterday. Yes, <laughs> Not once, but twice his at bats were interrupted by rain delays. How often do you think that's happened in Major League history? Oh, I, I don't know. Not much. I don't have the answer, but I'm just throwing it out there as it's a tailor made ground ball for Adamas to clean things up. Now you can get involved here, and I see many of you doing so already. You can add to the unique viewing experience that we do here on YouTube, the live game commentary. Subscribers of MLB's YouTube channel can join MLB, Brewers, Twins channel, and our YouTube creators are always there. You can chat live from your mobile device, your tablet, your computer, and then I'll keep an eye on those comments and bring them in. So for example, with this poll question, we've already had some write-in candidates. RFS527 says Detroit Tigers giant golden belt. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Parker with the glasses said. with the cool glasses. Yeah. I yeah, like got, that. I like that. Got some WWE vibes to yeah, it. And then yeah. Parker says the Angels cowboy hat. Mm, okay. I'm not as high that's on that a, that's one. That's kind of a reach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tough times for the Angels tough. right now. Yeah, tough. Yeah. Gio Urshela has a 2 0 count, or make that Ryan Jeffers. How about Ryan Jeffers, huh? looking to become uh, one of one of five players in Twins history to homer in three straight games as a catcher. Will he do it? Two will count. And now two and one as Ashby drops the curveball. Man, they drop a curveball like that 2 0. It's defeat man. You know, it, it's a hitter's count. You're expecting 96, 97. All of a sudden he says, uh uh, hold on a second. And he went back to back. And showing much with the heat right now. Ashby has the book on Jeffers. And do you know the last? I know you mentioned the home run streak, and if it's possible, the last guy to do that three in a row, catcher, Twins. Who do you think? Joe Maurer. Oh yeah. <laughs> Joe Maurer coming soon to the booth. Ooh. 96 from Ashby challenged him, and a full Me count. Too. I do have to mention this as well. As we'll get the fastball with pitch one more time. Next half inning, Brandon Woodruff will join us from the dugout. Nice. Brewers All Star starter, not this year, but in the past. Ball four. And that's ball four. So we'll take your questions so you can start to load them up. If you have questions for Brandon Woodruff, we'll ask him in the next half inning. First or second base runner of the day for Minnesota. Correa singled in the first. Now Jeffers reaches via walk. And here comes out Alex Kirloff. Call from Triple A on June 17th. I'm out. Yeah, this is an exciting rookie, or was an exciting rookie prospect. Uh, first round in 2016, 15th overall. Still highly regarded with the sweet left-handed swing, quick hands. Oh, is that right? He made his MLB debut on the 2020 <laughs> yes. AL Wall Card Series against the Astros. 2020 was kind of a blur. Can you of the imagine year, that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like every player wants to get called up during the year. You know, and it's like, all right, how is it going to be? What is it going to be like? You know, every, every player thinks about it. But you're getting you're, you're getting called up in the middle of a race, right? In the middle of a playoff race. That's incredible. First player to ever record his first hit in the postseason. It gets weirder too. Two and zero. Oh. No one was in the stands. That's Remember that? Yeah. So you're called up into the playoffs. Yep. Yeah. And there's no one around you, which might make it a little bit easier to get settled in. No. Yeah, I would say, I would say so. Still tough. Oh yeah, hits a hit. 
and gets a knock. And gets a knock. 2020 Shane McClanahan of the Rays also made his MLB debut in the playoffs. Oh. You know, if he's throwing this 2 0 curveball right here, he's feeling very comfortable with it, understanding that he's got really good feel for it. Because more than not, a guy throwing 96 97, lefty on lefty, it's a fastball count. Whoa. More than not, you're going to get that fastball. But giving him with, with the pitch that he's using right now, you, you might see more curveballs in this inning or in this at bat. Ouch. No. That got a piece. No. We can challenge. I heard the word challenge. Yeah. I think it was a foul ball. You can tell us to let him know. That's a foul ball. I see right here. We get first look. Did it hit the knob? Uh, I think he got his finger though. But the problem is the finger is part of the knob, right? The hands are part of the bat. It could be ruled a foul ball if they want to challenge it. Guess not. No challenge. But a good time for a chat. Here comes Chris Hook. Walk hit by pitch. And Gilberto Celestino is going to hit with two outs in the second. That's a good, that's a good mound visit right there. Trying to calm him down a little bit, He's speeding up. That's why they're trying to go with that breaking ball stuff. Not trying to do too much, just throw get kind of throw it through the glove. What a ballpark. It is packed here. Yeah, it is. Day games here in Minnesota, they're awesome. Wednesday matinee, and there's the hits you should difference for Ashby last year to this year. He is still progressing also worked through the system in the minors pretty quickly a fourth round pick by Milwaukee in 2018 <laughs> and starts Celestino with a strike there's the breaker bottom of the zone. What a moment here for Celestino though in this situation early on in the game first and second two outs. The rookie who's been outstanding defensively for Minnesota this year and holding his own with the bat but he's that's in an 0 2 hole. That's a good pitch right there after that curveball down and down and in for a strike going to the changeup. It's a really good weapon to use especially after a breaking ball because most hitters are expecting a heater. And when you can fool somebody with velocity like that, the changeup is a go-to pitch. Now he's got weapons to go to. Chipped right center, and that's going to bounce and bring in the first run for the Twins. Jeffers will score. Celestino makes it one nothing Minnesota in the second. That's a good piece of hitting right there with two strikes. Not trying to do too much. Seeing a baseball up in the zone. He was able to stay on his backside, hitting it the other way. Just a really good swing right there by Celestino. Went with that curveball, just like the first pitch he threw him in the at bat. Stay right through it. Wasn't trying to pull him at all, just using the other side of the field. There's a lot of hits on the other side of the field, especially in RBI situations. Good approach, good swing for Mr. Celestino. What an at bat. Impressive contact skills this season from the rookie. Batting average in the upper 200s. It's in the lower 200s for Byron Buxton. He's at 211 on this season. The slug is where you want it, but what's surprising is you would expect him to never be in this range just based on the fact that even if he doesn't get all the baseball and it's a weak ground ball, he's got the yeah. speed yeah. to leg out some infield hits. Here you go. He did not go around, says Jordan Baker. First base home. Jordan Baker. I had him in high A, double A, triple A, and the big leagues. As an umpire. And he makes everyone feel small besides yeah. Aaron Judge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like six, seven, I think. Well, you know, Ashby's gone with two old breaking balls here, and last couple of at bats, I'm intrigued he's going to throw him another one. Throwing the change up here. 
And, and the reason for that is not why not the breaking ball in this situation? And I know he's been doing it, but you know we talk about what he has done in Byron Buxton with the breaking ball. He is leading the league in slug at a, at a very high rate, 646 slug. When it comes to breaking balls, I'm intrigued if he goes back to that change of once again. Pulled left side, and the play is to Seki. Smooth glove from Marias, hooking up with Wong. But one run comes across for Minnesota. Celestino drives in the first run of the afternoon. One nothing twins through two. You need Ryan. How more? Two? He said two more. One more page. Pitching is the first word that pops up on a national stage, and it's because of guys like Brandon Woodruff, an 11th round selection back in 2014. He's a two-time All-Star, their opening day starter in 2020 and 2021. Last year was top five in NL Cy Young voting. Of course, his teammate won the award. And he's joining us live right now on YouTube as we talk through things in the third. Woody, what's up? How you feeling? I'm Feeling good, yeah, doing good. How about you guys? Really We're good. Fantastic. Getting yeah. a good tan on today. I'm trying. Well, I got the long sleeves on. I'm pretty pale, so I try not to. I try not to get in the sun. It's a good long-term approach. That's right. The skin. I'm there all about it. Hey, I'm going to give you. I already told everyone on YouTube in the chat that you're going to be here, so okay. I will mix in some questions to right. start us off too. As Jace Peterson, Victor Caratini, and Jonathan Davis are due up in the visiting third. Let's start with Dylan Shepard. Favorite pitch, and how do you grip slash throw it? Uh, favorite pitch, uh, four seam fastball. Uh, I think that's been my foundation ever since I've been pitching, and um, just a just your standard across the the four seams, and uh, just let it rip. Buddy, yonder Alonzo here. Look, I, I know he likes the fastball, but when I faced when him, I, I, I knew I wanted to get the fastball because that changeup that you throw is filthy, and I want to talk about that. I want to okay. talk when how. When did you know you had that good change up? How did you learn it? And when did you feel like it was, you know, kind of your go-to pitch as well? Because look, right now, the the, the numbers are in, right? And, yeah. and it's it's a the whiff on it is at 50 58 percent. So it's a it's a pitch that you definitely rely on. Can you talk to me a little bit about? You know, it? the 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 four seam and the two seam pass. Oh boy, Jay's Peterson sends a drive no. to center field, Don't heading back, it. and no. over the wall and gone. Call it, Woody. That's your yeah. boy. <laughs> Number eight on the season for Jace ties the score at one. All right, let me, let, power. Yeah, he's, he's coming in. He's gonna he's That's gonna right. put the hey, give uh, us the play by play. Can you get involved on the celebration? Oh, man, he's he's about to throw the uh, the gauntlet glove here on. I guess is what they call it. Yep. But, um, he's about to make his way through. And man, I tell you what, anything we can do to have a little fun and and uh, bring the kid out in us, and this is the way to do it. That was a fastball up in the zone right there. Good try by Celestino, though. He almost had it. Almost. Oh, key word. Almost. That's right. It went over. That's right. <laughs> Look at Hunter Retro. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> uh, but no, going back, uh, I mean, I've always been able to throw the four, four seam, two seam, and uh, change up. And that's just kind of been the foundation of what I do. And um, 
you know this year has been a little bit different with the change up I think I'm just doing honestly rip, there's not been a, a grip change there's I think it's just more of uh, I'm selling it a little bit better and uh, getting a little bit better arm action on it and I think um, as a hitter uh, you just you're, you're swinging at the, the hand speed so um, if I can make it look the same as a fastball I think that um, is what gives it uh, effectiveness. Yeah, I agree. Woody, I, I want to ask you a little bit off the field stuff. What what do you do? Do you hunt? Do you? Oh yeah. You know, what's your hunt What's your hobby outside of the the baseball field? Yeah, hunting, fishing, playing golf. Um, I think that's probably the three main things. But now I got a little um, coming up. She's about to be two years old, and got a little girl, and I spend a lot of time with that's her. Awesome. And uh, I mean that 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 definitely gives you a different perspective on life in baseball uh -huh. and uh, so now the off days are, are filled more with spending time with the family because uh, man it, it's a blast so well, the guy the guys that there's a couple guys that like to hunt there on that team Hunter Renfro oh yeah Chase we, Peterson who just went deep are you guys having a figuring out a trip well we um, about two off days ago we had an off day at home and uh, me and, and Hunter and, and Jace went out fishing a little bit and caught some fish and flayed them up bought a little burner from from Walmart and Took it over to Jason's house and kind of just reminded us, you know, that's that's kind of just growing up. That's just what hey, we Mom. do. Just uh, go catch some fish in the summertime growing up and flay them up at the house and, and fry them up. And uh, we have a good time and families get together. And I think anytime we can do that, that's. Uh, oh, oh boy. that is smoked up the middle from Victor Caratini, who's having a great first half at the plate for Milwaukee. But yeah, th this. Having fun like that, and uh, you know, me and Hunter, we we uh, we played at Mississippi State together. So um, I tell you what, Renfro would get up some mornings before class and go kill a turkey and uh, <laughs> make it to his 8 a.m. class and already you know kill a turkey early that morning. So I, I, you know, we're just we're just your 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 average people that can just so happen to play baseball. So that's right. A lot of you have little tykes too. So there's going to be. I mean, Josh Hader just recently. Yeah. There's that a ton of people kid, on the team right? that, that love to get outdoors and Corbin and uh, you know Hater and, and Jace. That's and, nice. Oh man, we got a ton of guys that just like to get out and enjoy the outdoors. So I, I like the vibe. The yeah. vibe yeah. in the clubhouse. You walk in there, man, and it's just like you can just feel the the, the everybody's positive, everybody's happy. How much fun is that? It, it makes it it makes a ton of difference. Um, like you guys get along. You guys are friends. You guys are yeah. boys. I mean, a lot of us have played together through the system and, and have come up together and and you know been with each other. So, um, I mean, that's that's just part of our cult culture here is just you know having fun. And I think that's when you're going through tough stretches, you you need to have that um, in the clubhouse. And I think that's what. Uh, oh boy. Davis back to Ryan. All right, that works. And that will move Caratini into scoring position. Out. But that helps Ryan, out the clubhouse. Just, just laid back atmosphere, having fun, and, uh, you know, just try to go out and play good baseball. We have some follow up questions from the YouTube chat, like Kyle Barkhouse, who is the worst golfer on the team? Worst golfer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, heard, uh, I heard Corbin just shot, he played a little bit yesterday and shot one under, so. He's definitely not the worst. He's probably the best on the team, but um, shoot, I don't know. I've, I mean, it's hard, man. You know what? Some of these guys, we can hit a baseball that's coming in at 95, but you put that ball and sit down on the tee still, it's hard to hit. <laughs> Keep it straight. <laughs> Keeping it straight is hard that's to hit. The, that's the part. Yeah. Hey, I want to talk to you about your rehab start. You, you, yeah. you had a little bit of a malfunction when it came to the <laughs> uh -oh. pants. Share, share it with yeah. us. Do we have photo evidence I while think he's we talking do. through there, it? There's probably some out there. <laughs> yep, after the pitch here to yeah, what happened? What happened there? So show up um, and Appleton going to make a uh, rehab start and get in the, they just don't have the right size on the pants and uh, they're either way too big or too small. And um, so I go into the manager who was my first manager in 2015, Joe a and I said, Joe, man, I can't pitch in these pants. Joe a he and, was my uh, manager in high -head. Yeah, and I said, hey, look, I got to, you cool if I just wear my pants? And he's like, yeah, so then I put my jersey on and it's way too big. And so I had to <laughs> strip, a, get Come another on. jersey, strip the name off the back. So I was out there, no name, and uh, with a white jersey and cream pants and uh, went, went well, so. That's awesome. The results were there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's fine. If anything, I'm looking. I'm going. Who's this guy that's with it. the yeah. two tones? <laughs> yeah, just showing up with some two tone. And oh yeah, I need this bad. Colton Wong into the sky and into Carlos. Hey, man, as long as he didn't do a sale, 
You didn't do the Chris sale and stuff like that. I'm sure you took care of the guy. Hey, yeah, he probably took care of him. I tell you what, he and, did. you know, I don't know. If, I mean, if, if there's yeah. something in the way and it doesn't go the way you want to, man. I tell you what, we're get some new TVs. That's us, new TV. <laughs> That's how we got, look at it. That's out. right. Yeah. Woody, we're like, hey, your TVs are old. Let me smash them up for the boys. Hook Just you up do with it. some new <laughs> ones. Hook you up with some new ones. Buy you some spread after the game. That's yeah, when good. you were down there, you got to hook the uh, minor league squad up with some oh, good yeah. grub, right? Yeah, I got them some. Um, Texas Roadhouse that was a, okay. a big uh, a big crowd favorite there so um, yeah and you're happy to do that go down there and um, uh -oh. see that's what gonna end here. our conversation here Woody. all right oh, yeah, cut the short but I could have went into it but um, <laughs> Booty, you're the best man <laughs> thanks guys. Appreciate, appreciate it always a pleasure you got it. good yep. luck the rest of the way right. talk soon okay thank you Be Brandon awesome. Woodruff multiple all-stars with the Brewers that rotation they're not just talented they are entertaining to talk yeah, to. Great everyday guys. We also saw a Jace Peterson blast to tie the game. One per side. Joe Maurer coming soon as well on YouTube. A little Wednesday afternoon hardball on YouTube. And if you're watching now, you have the choice of listening experience. I'll walk you through it. You click the gear icon in your player. Right there, mouse hook us up. Thank you. Choose audio tracks. Select either primary broadcast, that's us, or take your pick of Brewers or Twins radio calls, each available on your favorite device. You want to hear us if you're trying to listen to the great Joe Maurer in a half inning from now, he'll be in the booth with us. And again, we'll take questions. We'll talk through his thoughts on the Twins. I know you want to ask him. I'm going to give it away. I, I know you want to ask him about Luis Arias, the All-Star. Absolutely. I mean, but anytime you have a, a, a batting champion in the booth, you got to ask him. About a potential batting a champion. A potential batting champion. I like it. Pretty special, huh? Luis Arias. Oh, he is. Oh, my goodness. He's oh, playing he's a different hit. game. Yeah, he is. You know, it's funny. When we were talking and, and, and with Baldelli, the manager for the Twins, and he was talking about he's the only guy that may not see a pitcher really good and said, you know what, I'm just going to work a walk. We <laughs> and he'll work a walk. Like, I, I did not, listen, I, I, any fastball I would see, I would swing. And, and if I didn't like the pitcher, I wanted to get what? out of the at bat even sooner. So the first two pitches I would see, I was swinging regardless. So when we talk about approach, it's a word that's used a billion times in this game. His approach is on another plane. Well, when we talk about approach, when we talk about hitters and, and players in the comp, one Soto is the only guy that kind of comes into into base with me when it comes to a rise and what those two guys do, right, in, in between the walks and the, and, and the strikeouts. And they're the only active players with more walks than strikeouts if you go by a minimum of whatever it is. A thousand plate appearances, there we go. Which team has the best dugout celebration in baseball? At least this crowd has decided Infinity Gauntlet, yeah. which goes along with the bell, and of course, quite a few Brewers fans watching right now. 45%. That's your champ. We had tons of comments too. Like there was even a response to when we said, "Eh, the Cowboy hat, it's okay." And someone goes, "Come on, I just love seeing Shohei Otani in a Cowboy hat. It's fun." <laughs> that I'm is true. You. I'm with you. 
You like to see all the personality from one of the yeah. game's best. Yeah. Polanco with a drive to right. And Peterson backing up towards the track about a step in front. Kyle Garlic time. What do we say? When, when he's coming up, Garlic! <laughs> You're up! Go get him, boy! Let's do it! <laughs> On base plus slugging in his career. Ooh. Ooh, that was smoked foul. That was smoked. Heads up. Against righties, it's in the mid 500s. That's low. Against left handed pitching, He's well above 900. That's elite. It's elite. It's elite. Holy! Good pitch from Ashby. Good change up right there. Change up doesn't. His change up is a weird change up, right? It, it doesn't go down in a way like most change ups do. It, it actually cuts a little bit. And, and those are tough because you see the spin, you see the change up, you know it's a change up. You're expecting it to go down and away from you, but it actually cuts you. It, it kind of jams you if you go at it. Kind of jammed Caratini, but he was able to yeah. recover and frame it for the strike. And Garlic with a lip to left. McCutcheon grazing over. Two gone in the third. I'm out. Two outs, Correa on first. It's Jose Miranda, the rookie. And we are seeing his best swing since about mid June. Really picking things up. He's got the famous cousin, Lin Manuel Miranda, creator of Hamilton. Huh. You know Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah. Did you see Hamilton? No. Oh, you got to see it. Yeah. My sister's in, sister's it, in, in Broadway. It. Yeah. yeah. We'll set that up next New York City trip. I'll There's take so it. So many things to do, but I'm definitely in on that. Put that on your list. Yep. It is probably the best show I've ever seen. Jose apparently has never seen the show. Come on. It's your cousin. Yeah. Lynn's got to set him up. Got to set him up, Lynn. I was surprised. <laughs> When the Twins are in New York next, right? When they play the Yankees. You got to go. Got to go. Weekly left side, charging Smiling Arias. Smiling yes, going to leave it alone. Yeah. Infield knock for Jose Miranda. He was smelling that knock as soon as Celeste he left his bat. Third baseman Arias, was, he was way, playing way, way back. As we can see there, how deep he was. Got a good jump on it, but touch such a tough play right there, trying to barehand it on a tight, tight play like that at first base. Clear base hit. Look at him go. Oh, he smelled it. He's smelling it. You know what I like to do during those times? I like to just pump my hands as fast as I can. <laughs> pump your hands, pump your hands, pump Did your you hands, do that? pump your hands. Yeah, you look faster. You're not going as fast, but you look faster. Like, hey man, what to get down that line? It shows the hustle it to shows your team. The hustle, absolutely. I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna keep that in mind. Uh, pump your hands, pump your hands. And if someone's like, hey, come over, I need you. Ju <laughs> uh. Urshela. Ground ball out to short, first time through for him. Well, there's no rain right now. Can he make it rain though? <laughs> first and second, two outs, two old count right here. Is it, it, it's his time to go. Fastball count right here, although. They've been throwing more breaking balls on fastball counts. Mr. Ashby, will he do another one? His changeup has been go-to right here. Oh, there it goes. Buried it. And you have to respect the 96 to 97. That's the problem. Why guys are just spinning off of that and swinging on top of it. That's a mean slider right there. That's a good slider right there. That's his best pitch. For me, it's about letting the ball get as deep as possible. You got to hit the ball the other way if you want to use this approach against him and have success. Swinging and strikes is ideal. You see those flashes from Ashby 
and you know he's in the right organization to steer him to a better place. Like you said, stuff wise, it's there. Still learning about sequencing. Command. That's a strike. Wow. Thank you. Called strike. There you go. And the first thank you of the day for Yonder. If you're new to the party, the pitch is not quite in the zone. Yonder drops a. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm out. Uh, thank you for, for asking me. Gio Shell is probably saying, my man. I can really swing the game here. We'll see what happens on the payoff. Runners moving, and it's hit to center, hanging up there for a while. Jonathan Davis has the third out of the third. So it could have been a bases loaded spot yeah, instead, yeah. inning over after three, one per side. Thank you, Bobby. I'm on your knee, Ryan. So, Gary, do bien. You want two more? Our YouTube game of the week as we enter the top of the fourth with the Brewers here taking on the Twins all knotted up at one. July, gentlemen, is a very big month for legendary Twins pitcher Jim Cott. Not only is he going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, he's going to have his jersey number retired on July 16th right here. Cott's career spanned more than two decades. He was a twin from 1959 to 1973. The exclusive club he's joining. Check out these names, guys. Harmon Killebrew, Rod Carew, Tony Oliva, Kent Herbeck, Kirby Puckett, Burt Blylevin, Tom Kelly, and Joe Maurer. Congratulations to Jim Cott, guys. Yeah, thank you, Amy That's G. Awesome. Kitty, a friend of mine for many years. I've called games with him. Known him for over a decade. Nice as can be. Yeah. Hard worker. Longtime broadcaster. As how, well. about, how about this 16 gold gloves 16 16 gold gloves over 2400 strikeouts. My goodness. Over 4500 innings pitch. Ooh, man. He's getting the number retired and going to the Hall of Fame. Who's next for the twins. Which number should they retire. Tori Morneau Nathan Santana. This is a tough one. Tory, you think Tori? Tori, Tori is a guy that, yeah. You know, I just saw a clip not too long ago, and it was Tori Hunter Ooh. in the All Star game robbing Barry Bonds from a uh, a home run. I mean, you know, it's one, one thing to do it during the year, but an All Star game, I mean, just robbing Barry Bonds, unbelievable. Tori is a major mentor for Byron Bucks. It makes sense, right? Another talented center fielder as Telez pops it up. A lot of pop ups today. Yep. Gio Urshela puts him away. Andrew McCutcheon, you're up. How your arms touch like that? God, doggone. Flip me, how you do that? Ah, can't do that. He must, he must have no pectorals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's great. How do you do that? No bench press. I guess. That's awesome. He did it though. How do you do that? Oh, hey. Oh. Between innings, Joe Engage Ryan. Engage the back hip. 
working on his moves. He is an interesting. You man. would think that like he's off today, right? He's the starter. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the that's you know when I see that hip, it just reminds me of like unique New York, unique <laughs> New York. <laughs> oh, Joe Ryan could definitely make a cameo in Anchorman Absolutely. Four or whatever is next. Kutch stays alive. We didn't even get to, and if you were with us at the beginning of the game, all the other interesting components of Joe Ryan as we check out some upcoming milestones for McCutcheon. But almost every game, he pedals to the stadium. He's got some 1946 road bike that he restored. Huh. He's a big wave surfer. I'm like, how does he do all these things? He's got hobbies for days. Like the Dos Equis, man. Yes. That's exactly what I think about. Interesante. Interesting. I think he wore a turtleneck in the, his first or second start of the year because it was cold. The white turtleneck? On two. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Great flow. I just want him to get a pop up and catch it. <laughs> How about a strikeout? Climbs the ladder. Yeah, flashback to that. Catches a fly ball. The boys, all the starting rotation, they have kind of a thing going on. Whoever catches a fly, a fly ball foul gets 500 bucks. Look at him catch this ball. He's like, okay, 500 bucks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's on league minimum salary, so that means something. <laughs> Rack up some pop outs this year, make a few K. Hey, he told the catcher, get out of the way, buddy. <laughs> this one's mine. <laughs> That's awesome. He earned it. Narvaez first pitch popped up backwards. But oh, did that happen a lot? Where no. you made you know friendly and I guess a little bit financial wagers oh. with your teammates. Yeah, you know we used to have me and Joey Votto used to bet on a series on who would get more hits. So really, yeah. So we'll put like you know I don't know 100 bucks. We're like all right, whoever gets more hits takes 100 bucks. So it was a friendly competition. You know, and at the end of the mm -hmm. series, after the third game, you would take the money, and it would, <laughs> not, the then money. it would it would take you know it would be more guys would know about it, so it would be three or four guys would get in the mix, and next thing you know, you, you know, you have 300, 400 bucks for the series. Whoever gets more hits gets the money. And if you did a who gets the most walks game against him, he would have stolen everyone's cash oh, we were forever. Yeah, we were you can't do that. Mid four, one apiece. Uh, we're going to have some fun for this half inning in Minnesota. Yes, Mr. Minnesota. And let's take a look. Yonder, how does this look? Oh, man. Absolute stud. That's what that looks Everyone's like. Everyone's like, sign me up for that resume, please. Uh, and the smile and in recognition of Disability Pride Month, the twins in partnership with Gillette Children's are celebrating the inaugural Disability Pride Days at Target Field during their series with the Brewers right here. So joining us now to speak about it, longtime advocate, of course, longtime legendary twin, 
Mr. Joe Maurer in the house. Good to see yeah. you, Joe. It's good to be seen. Thanks for having me, guys. This Thanks awesome. for being here. Can we start yeah. on what I just touched on and give us yeah. a little more on Disability Pride Days? Absolutely. So Gillette Children's here is a, a hospital in St. Paul that I have a long history with. Um, goes back to 2004, my rookie year. I did a hospital visit there, and um, right from the get-go, you could tell it was a special place. Um, the energy there, uh, the staff, the kids, everything was so positive. And it was something that I just wanted to be a part of. So at 2004, I started a, a simple pizza party at Devani's here in St. Paul just to get some of the patients out of the hospital and just have a fun time. And it's just evolved into a yearly uh, fundraiser for the hospital. And I love talking about Gillette and the special things that they do here uh, right in our backyard here in St. Paul. And, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful place. Do you still have, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about I remember at first base, we used to talk and he used to say, hey, do you still have that studio? <laughs> yeah, um, we do. It's just, uh, it's got some cobwebs in it. <laughs> it's a music studio? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, we used to, a couple buddies of mine in the minor leagues, we'd come up and uh, we would mess around and, and have some fun with, uh, you know, put some songs on, some songs out there, Harry, okay. which will never be heard. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. great. great <laughs> they were not recorded. I, I yeah. wanted to ask you, though, you know, we talked about the batting titles and champions throughout your career and all that stuff. How you, how you beat that out. That's Ryan Jeffers with the he's infield down the line pretty good. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about Arias and, and how special he's been. And when you watch him, how much fun you you enjoy yourself watching watching him. Yeah, he's he's just kind of a throwback. You know, um, I love watching him taking a bat. He. Um, you can just tell by watching him, he has a plan. He has an idea of what he wants to do. Um, he's not afraid to get deep in account. Um, he's got great bat to ball skills and um, just understands the game. He's just got a knack for getting on base and uh, not afraid to take a walk, but he's also not afraid to uh, to you know slap the ball really wherever he wants to all over the field. So it's, it's fun to watch. Rocco Baldelli said, you know, he's the only guy I know that if he's not seeing the guy that good, he's just going to work a walk. Yep. That's so hard to do. And that's the thing, a player like that, and, and for me, if I saw more pitches, the more comfortable I felt. So the deeper I got in the count, especially if there wasn't a guy I knew very well, I wanted to see some pitches and, and kind of feel that out, and he does a great job of that. And there's the wild pitch to Kirilov that bumps up Jeffers to second. And Arai's a rare off day for him. He's fine. He's just sitting, and maybe we'll see him later. He's probably itching to play every day when <laughs> yeah. he's racking up hits like that right now. I mean, he is feeling it. And he'll be at the All-Star game along with Byron Buxton. Talking to Joe Maurer right now. And, of course, yes, for the YouTube live chat, we'll take your questions. We'll mix them in here in the home fourth. What do you think of the Twins this year? How often do you get to watch them? And what do you think of the way that the team has really turned things around from a down season and their front office in the offseason said this team is not what it looked like in 2021. We're going to build on this where some teams would go. All right, let's restart and press the yeah. reset. Well, I always tell everybody they got good bones. You know, they got guys that, that I played with that are still yeah. in there. That club I was talking about Jorge Polanco. Um, but I don't think he gets talked about enough. Um, you know, you can get excited about the Correa's, the Buxton, and rightfully so, because they're unbelievable talents, unbelievable players. But that Polanco, the Keplers, you know, guys that have been around, the Duffy's, Tyler oh, wow. Duffy in the bullpen, um, those guys have been around. They know what we're trying to do here, what the organization is trying to do, and they, they're kind of like pillars, you know, with this clubhouse. Yep. And yeah, yeah, last year was an off year, but um, they got a good group of guys in there. They got, they got talent. And uh, they should be fun to watch the rest of here this summer. They're not surprised by how good they're playing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, this is what we expect to do. And they've been there. You know, um, when I was playing with those guys, we were kind of coming up we trying do. to create Morning. that culture. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what we're trying to get to, what we're trying to win and, and, and get to that postseason. And, and they had a taste, you know, in 2019, 2020, um, Central uh, Division champions. So they've been there. They know what they need to do to get there, back there. And hopefully they can take that next step. Spiked off the bat of Kirilov, 97. He stays alive. All right, we are loaded with questions from the YouTube chat. So let us start with Matt Christie. Joe, do you still dream of playing? If so, would you ever consider playing adult league baseball? I mean, <laughs> you imagine him playing in the local community? Not yeah. fun. Pull your pitcher. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things you miss about this game. One, competing. I always tell everybody stepping in that major league box facing a major league pitcher, you know, the best in the world night in and night out. You miss those things. You miss the guys. You miss the game. Um, one thing I don't miss is the traveling and being away from from your family. Yep. Um, but you know what? It, uh, I'm in a good place. You know, I get to come here and 
and watch the game and, and see the guys and be a part of it, but also kind of go home and, and, and be dad. So, yes, I do miss um, parts of it, but uh, there's some parts that I don't. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, how about... Wait, wait, I, I yeah, will okay, say this, ahead, speaking of dad, uh, your dad, right, Jake, he, he, he built, when you were little, uh, eight years old, a, a whole net situation, right? It was a, the quick swing. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, so, I, I you know, growing up here in Minnesota, um, the weather it can be challenging um, to practice your baseball. So um, he came up with this idea. It was, it was called the Mauer Quick Swing, and it was a way to get swings in a small space, um, in which that small space was my basement or garage. And um, it was almost like that drop drill. So you put it in, you know, this PVC pipe, and it come around, and it drops straight down. So you had to be short and quick to the ball. And um, I would hit off that thing for, for hours. I'm assuming you had a net. Had a net. Uh, actually, it was just like a little tarp that we put up in the garage. And, Perfect. And I'd go out there, and he'd vary the sizes of the ball. So I'd be hitting wiffle ball golf balls with little pipes and, and all sorts of things to make it a little game out of it and, and uh, make it more challenging. That was very helpful for yeah, the career absolutely. at a young age, yeah. too, at eight. Yeah. So it was, it was just one of the things. I think my dad realized how competitive I was and uh, liked to throw a lot of different things at me to try to challenge me. So... Um, had a lot of fun with it. Matthew wants to know who is your favorite pitcher that you played with? My favorite pitcher. Wait, what's Matthew's last name? Is that uh, Matthew I did play with? <laughs> when I, no, right. Um, is there a Matthew you play? I'm trying to think. Matt you know, Garza. You played Matt Garza, Garza yeah. <laughs> I was going to say uh, there's, there's a few of them. But, you know, that's the thing. I think, um, you know, it's tough to say. I mean, there's the Johan Santana's, there's the Brad Radke's, Carl Pavano's. Um, you know, I know I'm missing Francisco Liriano. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I probably have to say, you know, if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Johan Santana. Just the fact of his ability, his mentality. Um, you knew every time you gave him the ball, he was going to, you know, if you scored one or two runs, you were going to be Game good. Over. You know, he was just that stopper. If you were going through a rough patch, he had the ball, you felt good that you were going to get out of it. So, um, and what a teammate, too. You know, just a great teammate, kept everybody loose. So. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Santana. There was a time period, what, about a four-year stretch. He was the best. It was undisputed. No doubt. Best pitcher in the game. Amy G., I know you want to get one in here to Joe. Question for him. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Joe. Nice to meet hey, you me. via the broadcast. And we just promoted that uh, Jim Cott's going to have his jersey retired. You are a member of that exclusive club. And I was just hoping you could share a little bit about that experience and that honor, what it means to you. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. It's it's the highest honor a team can bestow on somebody. And uh, there's a Polad family right there. And um, you know, every time I come into this park, I see number seven up there. It just makes me smile. And you know, I get to bring my kids here. They get to see it. And um, it, it's just a tremendous honor. Definitely humbled by it. And. Um, thankful I mean it Jim's gonna have a great weekend here and I'm, I'm looking forward to celebrating with him and and the rest of uh, the twins uh, territory here Byron Buxton with two on and one down in the fourth that's taken downstairs okay I like this question from David Michael is it true that you only struck out yeah. once in high school <laughs> That is correct, yes. Um, so high school baseball seasons are pretty short up here, but um, in three years, um, I think we play about 30 games a year, and uh, in three years I struck out once. It was my junior year. Were you mad? I was really upset. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I was I was actually drafted by the Minnesota Twins in the 17th round, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget this story. The guy that drafts me, the scout in Miami, says, "Listen, kid, uh, I don't think you should sign with the Twins. There's a guy by the name of Joe Maurer, and there's a guy, but who was the first baseman at the time? Uh, was it Morneau? Uh, Morneau. Morneau. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that you should go play at Miami. And I would oh, I was always thinking like, who's this Maurer guy? Who's this Morneau <laughs> guy? Lefty pop, and they loved me because I was a lefty." Well, good thing I didn't sign because these two guys, they, they became pretty much the pillars of, of the Minnesota Twins for 20 years. You never would have played. They never would have played. I would have never played. <laughs> but I remember one thing I do remember specifically from Joe is every time I first base, I would always ask him, right? We would always talk yeah. hitting. Hey, Joe, what do you got on my swing? Hey, Joe, what are you working on? Hey, Joe, what's happening with you right now in your swing? How's it going? Every, is out. And you were always so grateful to just share your knowledge. I'm are out. you doing that yeah. now with this team? You know, not so much with the team. Obviously, I still have a lot of friendships. Um, nothing officially. Um, so I, I still keep in contact with some of the guys. And I always tell them I'm, I'm right across the river. You know, I'm a phone call away, whatever you need, you know, baseball or not. You know, just I'm here. And um, you, know, you build those relationships, right. um, you know, through the years. So 
Um, I'm, I'm close by. I'm a phone call away. But uh, these guys are doing just fine. You know, yeah. I always talk about like the Polancos, the Keplers. Those guys have been around for a while. They know what they need to do oh. and uh, where they want to go. And, and um, it'll be a fun summer to watch them go. It's awesome. They've got a good one here in Carlos Correa, who's reached base in both plate appearances so far today after the Buxton strikeout. Back to back punch outs here for Ashby. Now with two on, and it's Correa. Two outs in the home fourth. A little more time with Joe Maurer and more questions. Elijah, what's the loudest game that Joe remembers playing in? You know what? That, that's a great question. It just came up about 10 days ago. I was uh, chatting with somebody and they asked me that same question. And um, it was uh, game three, I think it was. We were in, in the Metrodome in 2009 and it was against the New York Yankees. And I got to know, you know, Andy Pettit, obviously, from playing against him so much over the years. but. I had ran into him at a golf tournament and he came up to me and he said, Joe, I just got to tell two. you something. And he said, the loudest stadium I've, or the loudest mound I've ever been on was that 2009. He goes, you hit an RBI single to go one nothing in the sixth inning at the Metrodome. And he said, that's the loudest I've ever heard on a baseball field before. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. This Andy Pettit's been pitching so many big games over right. the years. Right. But what they used to do in the Metrodome, they used to put the curtain up so you could add another 15,000 people in there. So you're playing in front of 60,000 people with no noise, you know, just trapped in there, you know, couldn't leave the bubble. So I thought that was pretty cool that Andy Pettit, uh, you know, told me that. And um, that's kind of been my answer, you know, uh, from there on out. It's funny. I, I've always wanted to ask you this is favorite guy to face? Because most of the time we don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. But now we can talk about it. Who's the guy that you really would like to face? You know, it, <laughs> It's tough because um, when you're going good, it feels like it Anybody. doesn't matter, you know. But um, <laughs> one guy, and for whatever reason, I don't know what the reason was, is Joel Pinheiro. And he was nasty. You know, he could move the ball over the place, but for whatever reason it was, I, I had some success off. That's awesome. Joe, we appreciate it. Thank you so much Guys, for swinging fun. by. And I'll say it as I we're going to break. To uh, the twins, in partnership with Gillette Children's, are celebrating the inaugural Disability Pride Days at Target Field during this series with Milwaukee. The great Joe Maurer with us in the booth as the Twins and the Brewers remain locked up at one apiece. If you pay attention to our YouTube broadcasts on a weekly basis, you know it's creator spotlight time as we highlight one of the amazing YouTube creators on a weekly basis, Sportstorm, run by Taylor Betancourt, focusing on the analytical and storytelling side of baseball, current events, stories of the past, over 7 million views on his videos, over 41,000 subscribers. The channel's only a few years old, too. It was started in 2019, so Sportstorm, thanks for joining us today. Say hello in the chat, and we'll... Uh, Drop that into the broadcast. First pitch 
is sent to right. Kyle Garlic is going to catch it in stride and retire Luis Arias, and we'll send it over to Amy G. Hey guys, yeah, just some Twins news. I think it's fair to say that the players and the organization they were all very surprised when Wes Johnson announced in the middle of the season that he'd be leaving his pitching coach position here with Minnesota to take the pitching coach job at LSU. But Pete Mackey, who was the then bullpen coach, has made the transition a very smooth one. I had a chance to catch up with Pete, and he said, "Knowing the staff is everything in a new job. He hasn't had to get to know anyone. He said he has." A high level of comfort. He knows what drives the staff and he knows why they've been successful. He added it's a true honor to be entrusted with this role. There are only 30 of these jobs guys around the country and he also said that Wes is a true mentor to him. Helped him grow and be prepared for this opportunity. Gentlemen. Great stuff. Yeah and what a blitz. You can prepare all you want but then mid season yeah. right. If you had a job like that let's say suddenly you were named hitting coach. If it's in the offseason, you're like, all right, let me yeah, you can figure everything out. Let me yeah. talk to each guy. Yeah. Let me get prepared. And he's been with the team now, but yeah. I'm all instill my game plan. But when we spoke to Rocco Baldell, he said it's a programming, yeah, it's, it's a pitching program. It's not about one person. It's a department. Yeah, it's a department. Yeah, that's what I like most about it. And I was going to touch up on that is the fact that, you know, it's not just one guy doing one specific thing that nobody else knows about. No, it, it, it's six, seven, eight guys in a department where everybody knows what everybody's doing. It's a it's a collective team of a department when it comes to the pitching staff. So it's always good, you know, when things like this happen, which not not do. often do they happen, but when it does happen, everybody's prepared. Look how everybody just shifted 3-2 right now, completely to the right side. Nothing's going to be thrown away. If so, it's going to be something soft. And it is ball four. Leadoff walk for Arias. Only 63 pitches going now in the fifth for Joe Ryan. Or Jace Peterson, my bad. As Arias was retired to start off the fifth. Whose number should the Twins retire next? Torrey Hunter. Oh, your, your vote. Yeah. One big. Torrey Hunter. I think he's the guy. Awesome. Another, another great, great teammate. Oh, man. He was beautiful. The personality too is off the charts. Twins fans know especially, and when you get to hear him on a broadcast too. How about Carantini this year? You know, last that bat, rocket up the middle. But but the year he's having compared to the last couple of years with the Cubs and the Padres, you know, he's had a really good chance to play, and he's taking full advantage of the opportunity. Last AB, he torched the baseball up the middle. I mean if you look at the peripheral numbers in addition to the line which is 250 7 18 very healthy on base percentage. This is probably the best half of his career hitting wise. Yeah. They have three catchers. It's what I told Craig Council a good problem but it's tough to hold three catchers on a roster in today's game when you need pitching. Yeah. for the entire season so you figure that's going to eventually play itself out and of course there were moves today too as the Brewers needed to add another pitcher to get through the stretch run here Keston Hira was optioned and no Yelich in the lineup today still dealing with the back issues we mentioned it earlier there's a look at the Brewers catchers the duo and then Severino recently up after serving the 80 game suspension for performance enhancing drugs but Keston here actually had been hitting the ball well in a short sample in the month of July. But he'll head back to the minor leagues for now. Well, and also what they do on the defensive side, right? They're, they're top five in defensive run saves. In framing, they do a phenomenal job in yeah. and, and running a staff. You know, good catchers, I always feel like, Scotty, they go unnoticed. Right? They're back there, they're controlling the whole game, but nobody even knows that they're back there. And that's that's what we have here with these two guys right here. It's like yeah we can talk about the pitching staff. Yeah we can talk about the starting pitching. We can talk about the slugging with Hunter and, and, and Aramis and all these guys. But when you talk about these catchers there's not that many in the league and they can certainly play and do their part.
Caratini pops one into the seats. So the Brewers like to identify catchers that can swing the bat, like Omar Narvaez, and say, if you come here and buy into our program, we can make you a much better defender, and that includes of course, framing strikes. Yeah, and, and I think they have a really good coach in that with Walker McKinnon. I want to say this is his name. I know Walker's his first name. name. Well, yeah. And, and, and he does a phenomenal job with them, uh, not only just in the big league team, Walker does, but all around in, in the organization, he really strives for that and, and wants them to be the best that they can be, especially when it comes to the defensive side. Wow. What really helps for Milwaukee this year is the fact that they can mix in more rest Ooh, for Narvaez, yeah. who was a first half all star. His bat definitely dipped production wise in the second half of last season. He was catching almost every day. Yep. They don't need to him to do that this year, and it's going to make a huge difference. Look at Craig Council. I mean, he looks, what, 30 years old, and he's leading the organization and wins as a manager in franchise history as that's ball four. Back to back walks served up by Joe Ryan. Peterson and Caratini on board for Jonathan Davis. Something's brewing right here. Was that pun intended? I don't know. Or unintended? <laughs> unintended. Intended? <laughs> <laughs> intended. Just making sure. Just, just making sure. <laughs> uh. Davis first pitch, and it's falling fast in center oh! and caught. Of course, Celestino to the rescue. Well, we talked about Celestino with the RBI base hit earlier in this game, but his plus four outs of seven defensive run saves is, is pretty good when it comes to their defense. We know there's really good center fielders out with Buxton playing every day, but Celestino, that first step right there was crucial. Off the bat, he knew he had a beat on it. Great play right there. Thank you. And he had to hit the pedal a little harder once he saw that ball nose diving to the grass. Yeah, he knew it was going to be short, but then once he really realized after that second, third step, he needed to pick up gear. He sure did. Man, I love watching a lefty center fielder go get balls. There's nothing like it. He's been an ideal backup to Byron Buxton on a day like today. That's when right. Byron's the DH. And it's going to be very crucial, right? To have a guy like Byron Buxton play all year when you have a really good center fielder like that, where, sure, we want him to succeed in the bat, but the defensive stride that he brings to the table is like no other. Hi! Statcast hit probability on that last baseball 60%. So more often than not, it results in a base hit. I love good defense. Well, we're certainly seeing one. You good? One game today. You got yeah. it. And a couple of really good plays. You sure? What does the card say about Colton Wong with two strikes and two outs in the fifth? Jonathan Davis has made some One, two. sweet plays in center field as well. As the Brewers are waiting for Tyrone Taylor to come back. He's had a little setback, concussion symptoms. That is oh. up the shoot, hot shot, and Correa's on it. What a tough hop to corral. That's why they signed him up in the offseason. Defense, the theme in the fifth. Oh, this is going to be captured forever by Kickley. Celestino making a nice play in the fifth.
This is not yonder again. This is Kickley. <laughs> time lands, uh, time lapse of the work that he's done. Oh, the logo, beautiful. I don't even have to say it. That's awesome. I right will there. though. MLB game of the week live on YouTube. First place Brewers, first place Twins. MLB The Show 22 is available now on PlayStation and Xbox consoles. And for the first time, the Nintendo Switch system rated E for everyone. And the MLB.TV All-Star Sale is here for $47.99. Watch all out-of-market regular season games live or on demand, plus MLB Big Inning. Sale ends July 17th. Visit MLB.TV for details. Just in time for the next pitch from Aaron Ashby. 95 down the middle, home fifth. RBI single for Gilberto Celestino in the second. That's the lone run for Minnesota right now, and that is into Jace Peterson's glove in right field. Polanco flies out. For the third time to right. Yes. Same result, three trips. And now Kyle Garlick, who's 0 for 2. For Milwaukee, it's a Jace Peterson blast to center field, representing their only run. Beautiful day. Scott Braun, Yonder, Alonzo, Amy G. Woo! And a strike to Garlic. Nothing about, you know, I know we're in a stadium, it's called Target Field, but gosh, there's nothing like Target. I mean, I feel like I go there for one <laughs> thing and I leave with 100. It's just a terrible thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's terrible or, or good. Or great. Or great. Depending <laughs> I would, on. I would go. I'm yeah, just going to go get one thing like. and I would just go and I'll leave with all sorts of things. And then your house is much more of a party. <laughs> it's a party. It's always a party at Yonder's house. What do you mean? Very true. There's a rocket to right. Kyle Garlic's first hit of the day. Aaron Ashby's having a nice day. Yeah, sure. There are some walks mixed in there, which we've seen from him this season. But the swing and miss stuff is certainly there for yeah. Aaron. It is five strikeouts through four and a third for him so far. And I know we're seeing change of in sliders back there. But most of those counts is because he's throwing that heater where he wants to locate it. So anytime he gets ahead with that fastball, he can go then to that change up that slider, which today he's had really well working for him. Oh, ouch. <laughs> They're talking in Spanish. Yeah, enough to funny. translate. Oh, yeah. Carantini told him, I told you, you got to get behind me. I told you, he says, yeah, I know you told me. I know you told me. Look at him laughing. He's having a good time with Here him right go. there. <laughs> uh, he was feeling it, too. He, he got him good. He's like, ah. Oh. Carantini's telling him, I told you, man, you got to get behind me. Got your back. Yeah. It's going to play it on Jose Navas. That was great. <laughs> Ball one to Miranda. Yes, good note. Uncle Andy, longtime Padre, two time All Star. Curveball is in there to Miranda. It's a good pitch right there. Andy Ashby, 14 big league seasons for the Padres. So when the Brewers faced San Diego, Andy was like, I'm definitely rooting for my nephew, but I still love the Padres. So <laughs> he goes, I'll wish the Padres medium luck today, not full good luck. Shot into right center, and Davis chasing, diving on a bounce. He's got it. Keeps it in front of him, and it's a knock for Miranda to move Carlick to second. I'm out. And even if he did sell out and didn't keep it in front of him, I think Peterson was there to back him up in yeah. time. But nice job good on there the by miss Davis, to yeah. still keep it in the glove. You see he was shifting him to left center, but he got a good jump on that. And it was a good effort right there. Those are the ones you want to die for. The reasons for that is because it's not really hit that hard. So if it does bounce, it's going to stay somewhere around where he's at. Good effort though all around. We know he can make those 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 catching grabs at any given time. That's it for Aaron Ashby. There is a ridiculous catch that we need to show everyone. 
from Jonathan Davis about a week ago, which we'll do after a new pitcher, Trevor Gott, comes in out of the bullpen for Milwaukee to take over in the fifth. Trevor Gott is in and we're going back in time not too far back June 29th Jonathan Davis show us your skills in center wow and the collision in center with the wall hold on to the baseball look at the angle oh goodness he's okay he's playing today he actually stayed in that game yes. came out later on but unbelievable catch you know talking to Craig Council I was like so how much fun has he been he's like hey We've asked for him to just come here, play good defense, be a solid guy, and do all the little things, and he sure has done that. Show off the glove, the instincts. They're the very speed. happy with him. Right now, the only true center fielder on the roster, right. for example, yesterday, Hunter Renfro was supposed to start in center until Yelich was a late scratch, which moved Renfro to a corner to bring Davis into the starting lineup. This is Trevor Gott. What are we working with? Oh, we're going to see a lot of cutters. That's his go to pitch last year he only used it about 7% of the time right now. This is the pitch he likes to throw is cutter for seam curve and this is the matchup Luis arise ball one off the bench the all star leading baseball in average and on base. Big spot for Minnesota and the twins falling in yesterday's game 6 3 trying to grab a dub before four more games to finish out their first half of the season and that's ball two. That was an automatic take right there 2 0. -oh. He see just wanted to see a pitch. Yeah he just wanted to see the pitch right there. Now he's seen the curve on the four seat. He hasn't seen the cutter yet which is his go to pitch right here. I'm intrigued if he wants to throw it right now. I wouldn't want to see a backdoor cutter. I would rather see more of a inside cutter trying to jam him up. Just a little baby cutter right there. Good pitch down and away. Now he's seen it. So now he's seen all three pitches. Now he can go to work. He's still winning the at bat at a 2 1 count. Big moment right here. But one for his arise. last 10 with runners in scoring position, but dynamite on the year. Oh, he's due. Garlic and Miranda with back to back hits. Way out in front. Uh huh. Those two singles sent Ashby to the dugout. This is where Arise, though, this is where the at bat starts. Two strikes, this is where he goes to work. You know, we're talking about a, a guy who, who puts the ball in play 92% of the times when he swings. So the at bat certainly starts right now in this 2 2 count. He's seen every pitch. There we go. Oh, Three. got him. Froze him with heat. Absolutely froze him. I think he was sitting for something softer. Was not expecting that heater. You rarely see him take a fastball right down the middle like that. 
Just an absolute beauty by Trevor Gott right there. So how do you explain that to fans watching at home going, it was right down the middle with heat. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he's thinking curveball, he's thinking cutter. Cutter is his best pitch. He decided not to go with it. He, he actually went with that four-seamer right there. You see him right there, he's completely surprised, saying, man, I was really looking for a cutter, something softer in the zone. And he threw him that fastball right there, completely frozen. Only the sixth time all season Rarely he see has that. struck out looking. He rarely strikes out in general. That one skied off the bat of Jeffers. Great job by Trevor Gott. Right Here comes there. Peterson. Side retired. Yeah, Trevor Gott. Brilliant strikeout. Easy pop into look, right. Look Inning guaranteed. over. Two stranded. 1-1. One, one. Oh, rise at first. All right, let's take you through the last A-B for Trevor Gott against Luis Rise. Yeah, and I think for me it was a 2-0 pitch that, that set the at-bat up right there. He got him right there with a 2-0, and that fastball right there, boom. That fastball right there lets me know, okay, Trevor Gott, you got that fastball and you, you really like it. He went with that slider and then, boom, freeze him right there again like he did with the 2-0. That was the pitch for me, the 2-0 pitch that was a strike. I would have liked the rise to be a little bit more, more aggressive with it. He was not, he was looking for something soft. It looked like he was looking for something soft. The whole at bat, Trevor got there right there, was mismatched by using the heater. And then a lazy fly ball out to conclude the inning. That's a nice move by Rocco Baldelli. Oh, two on, tie game. Yeah. Luisa Rise, best batting average in baseball, but Gott wins the battle and kind of shows us what this Milwaukee team is all about, pitching in big spots. I mean, they have, I would say, a big four out of their bullpen. Got, I wouldn't include in that right oh. now, but Obi Milner has been outstanding this year. Brad Boxberger, another solid year. And then Devin Williams and Josh Hader are two of the top five relievers in baseball. Yeah, it was a chance right there in the fifth inning. I mean, look, we talked about it earlier. Because oh, you, one you one. can say, okay, you got to want to leave your best hitter to later on in the game. But Rocco Baldelli is realizing this game is going to be a, a, a two to one ball game, a three one ball game. They're not going to score that many runs. That was the opportunity right there where he felt his best weapon could come up big for the Twins. It's a good point. If the Brewers jump out one. in front, it's very rare that you're going to see a successful comeback effort. And yep. the Twins don't get to see guys like Williams and Hader very often, which is even more of a problem. To get used to that arm angle. Adamas, another lazy fly ball. And there's Polanco moving over to grab it. Let's go down to the field, Amy. Gentlemen, just a little bit more on Willie Adamas. He was a really good player with Tampa, but since becoming a brewer, he's been a star. I had a chance to catch up with him and ask him what clicks for him in Milwaukee, and he said they encouraged him to be himself. Now, he said he joked with manager Craig Council, are you sure I have a really big personality? But that personality is an asset. He's bilingual and he serves as a bridge in the Brewers clubhouse. Adama said that that's allowed him to be free and that means he gets to play free. 
He added when he arrived in Milwaukee last year, these guys didn't treat him like a friend. They treated him like family. Guys? Amy G, thank you. And during that time period, pitching change. Joe Ryan's day is done. Caleb Thielbar is coming out of the bullpen. So we'll step aside. 1-1 on a Wednesday afternoon in Minnesota. Top six. Nice bounce back performance from Joe Ryan today. 78 pitches, goes five and a third, one run, three strikeouts, two walks after a shaky last outing a week ago against the White Sox. That fastball is just tough to see, invisible, Three. some yeah, call it. We talked about it earlier in our pregame. We said a lot of swings and misses with the fastball, a lot of pop-ups. Felt like we saw about six or seven of them. Hey, and today, I, I felt like today he had his best stuff. Lowered his ERA under three right now at a 299, and we got Caleb Thielbar. Yes, we do. And that ERA is a bit deceiving, too, for Thielbar because he just had to get himself going. And it took some time. A slow start at the beginning of the year. Nine earned runs in his first five and a third. He's been much better since then. Last 30 outings, the ERA is in the low threes. Yep. Fastball curve, slider change. That's what you're going to see. You know, most guys just cannot barrel him for some reason. I mean, this is a guy who, who is a strikeout heavy machine. But when guys are putting the ball in play, there's just not, the exit velocity is just not there. Wouldn't mind seeing a slider here. Rowdy Telez pulls it to the right side, and there is Luis Arias. Pinch hitting, and then now into the game at first. Miranda goes from first to third. One more poll question before the U2 player of the game later. I'm in. Very simple. Brewers, best in the Central I right do. now. Twins leading the AL Central. Which team will have a tighter division I'm race? Whew. I, you know, I think the Brewers are going to have a tighter one because of St. Louis and what St. Louis has done in the past and, you know, the guys they have. I, I think Minnesota, if anything, they're going to be buyers at the trade deadline. Oh, yeah. They're going to add some more pieces. I, I really do think this is their window when it comes to Minnesota and, and understanding, like, hey, we can actually win this division. But when it comes to the Brewers and the Cardinals, this is going to be a battle in September when they face each other tons. And every game is going to be a deciding game. Two game separation right now between the Brewers and the Cardinals. And then there's the AL Central. It's close though. It is. You have the Guardians. They're an even 500, and their play has been crumbling lately. But what about the White Sox lurking? They've had some tough times as Telez strikes out. For me, it, it comes down to what adding pieces in the bullpen. You know, we talk about both of these teams and, and their blown saves or blown opportunities. They're gonna they're gonna get better in the, in the starting department of the pitching staff, and they're also gonna fix what's happening in the bullpen. But by no means, I, I think the arms are there to go get. And you know, when it comes to the postseason, Scotty, you need pitching, right? O offense is going to be shut down because of good pitching. 
And I think that's what they're going to do. Andrew McCutcheon ball one. So after this series the Brewers are making the trip out west. They'll play four in San Francisco before we break for the All Star game. The Twins welcome the White Sox. Big series. Big cut from McCutcheon but you know Chicago that's a talented roster. It has not come together for them yet. And you'd expect them to be a better team in the second half of the year. Yeah I, I would think but you know when I look at Minnesota and what they do as well as Cleveland they run the bases right they play good defense they get timely hitting. McCutcheon shoots it into left center and that's going to fall. Woo! Two out single for Kutch. And career hit number 1,900. He's all mic'd up today. I'm out. Oh, man, he gave it to me. Too early being here, too early playing, and then too early on that swing. He holds on to it a little longer than you expect. So it's like, you know, it gets it right here, and it's like, and then he lets it go. That's great right there, huh? It's the intel from yeah. the veteran. 1900 career hits, man. That's a lot of hits. It's a good swing right there on this last one with the slider. Stayed on it right there, stayed through the baseball. Anytime you get a slider like that, all you're thinking is using the middle of the field, and that's what he was doing right there. Great approach, great swing. And the pinch hitter, Pedro Severino. One for six late start to the year PED suspension first 80 games and now part of a trio of catchers on the active roster. It's lefties better. Back on July the third. Ten days ago. And in the air, twisting into the seats. Let me. He got one there. Huh? Just missed it. You want that one back? Yeah, he wants that one back. I don't think he's going to see another one, though. Up in the zone, fastball, 92 miles an hour, 1-0 one, one -oh count. You know it's coming. You know he's going to challenge you. You know who loves left-handed pitching is Hunter Renfro, who returned yesterday from the injured list. Not in the starting lineup today. I thought maybe we could see him as a pinch hitter in a spot like this, but there's your answer for now. There's the fastball. Uh, and now you can really tell with that drive on that fastball, that 92 mile an hour fastball. It's got some pickup on it. Three quarters of the way up, most guys are just going to be underneath it. Swim. It just looks like guys are, are, are swinging underwater. Pick your poison. Slider, curveball. I, I, I like the, the fastball up in the zone, but I, I really like the slider down. He tried to go up right there, he missed, but the fastball up right now, the way he's swinging the bat. He's a little late, a little tardy. I, I wouldn't want to speed his, his bat up right now with a slider and, and it hangs and he can just pull pull it. I would much rather kind of continue to challenge him with fastballs. And as we can see right there, it's four straight fastballs. Look for the fifth one to come in. One, two. I'm out. First breaker of the sequence. Two. Always like the ambience, right? Like the the, the crowd noise of a, of a ballpark, a packed ballpark. This place is unbelievably packed right now. The sound of some. The sound. Will you have room here? Arise. Oh. Does not. And that's two straight foul balls right there. Wrong side of the netting. 
It just tells me the pickup and the carry on his fastball and what it's doing right now. With Caleb Thierbar. It's got ride, it's got pickup, as we can see another foul ball right there. Two, two. Same spot, maybe the same person got it. That's souvenir. Maybe. Sweet shades right there. I was a flip down type of guy. I needed my flips. Oh, the flips? Yeah, I like yep. the flips. I just remember me of the old days with Griffey out there in center with the flips. Kind of cool. You know, I, I'm not really the fastest guy, so I always had time when a fly ball would come. Usually it was foul. Put the shades down with the eye black on. <laughs> Your style game Talk is to on me. Point. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Arise is going to bring that flair to the All Star game. Oh, he is. You don't see that many flip down guys anymore. No. You know, it, it, it's a skill, man. Is it not in vogue? No, is it not a thing right a, now? They have none there. It's just, you know, guys like the, what do they got? They got the Oakleys now, the Nike shades, the, the 100s. You know, they got all these types of shades. I, I was more just old school. Boom, flip downs, let's go get it. It seems more practical. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Griffin Jacks heating up. He was our guest on the pregame show. Severino does invite. Three, two. Three, two, everybody's running. Plays at first base. Mostly fastballs in this battle. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Walked him. Good at bat right there. He didn't really mess with him with the breaking ball. I'm intrigued right now with this at bat. You got a lot of information as we see that fastball up and away. With Urias coming up, if he's going to take advantage of that and understanding that. This is a, a, a primarily fastball type of guy. He's coming at you with fastballs. He understands the right of the fastball. I'm intrigued if he's going to jump him right away with the fastball and be aggressive in a situation like this, first and second, and two outs. And looking to boost his batting average with runners in scoring position, just nine for 48. Oh, slider. Hi. And he was setting out completely for the heater. You can tell. When, when, when guys are, are upset about a slider where they think it's a ball, it's because they were looking for a fastball. They were looking for a fastball up in the zone, nothing down in the zone. Similar pitch, just missed. I like what Caleb is trying to do here. Understanding the previous at bat was majority fastballs and he's changing it up on Luis Urias. McCutcheon and Severino on two outs in the sixth. Three straight sliders right here. One two. He's got windows now. He can go up in the zone. He can go down in the zone. Maybe a harder slider instead of a curveball. Try to bait him. And he's a high chase rate pitcher too. He can get you to swing out of the zone like that. But it's in play in right and caught by Garlic Celestino cutting in front of him. And the inning is over. Two runners stranded by the Brewers. Mid six, still 1 1.
2022 player of the game joins us right now. There it is, the trophy. It looks good. <laughs> Gotta have it. This is going up on the top shelf for sure. I watch a lot of YouTube, so it's good. <laughs> I think this is the first time of holding a trophy on an interview, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> Anytime you get a trophy, it's usually a good thing. I feel great. This is amazing. Well, this is going to be right next to the TV so I could just see it everywhere. <laughs> Polanco and Arise have won it in the past. Who is next? YouTube player of the game trophy. Byron Buxton won one as well. They all have a shot to win it again. Back to back or two time champs, I Why should not? say. It could happen. We started it last year and you're going to help us out later in the game with voting. We'll open it up via the poll, tablet, phone, screens, etc. But we need to see who helps decide the result of this game first. Still a lot to go in the home sixth. 1-1, one, one, Buxton do up third in this inning. You know, for the first time in my life, I was able to pick up that trophy today. Uh -huh. You know how we excited I was on the field. We yeah, were, we were both did. Excited. That was your first time, yeah. right? Yeah. Handling the trophy. Heavy trophy. Heavy trophy, I like it. Damn. Look at recent winners. Buxton and Polanco last year, Arise spoke to us about a month ago. More Trevor got in the sixth for Milwaukee. Well, Trevor got pounding the zone. Trying to go up the ladder here. Ball one to Alex Kirilov. He's got a very loose arm. Infield's completely shifted to the right side. So is the outfield. Breaking ball count. Let's see. More heat. Trevor Gott's just five foot ten, 182 on the mound. Signed by the Brewers in November of last year for this season. Pulled right side. There's three on the right side of the infield. That's a that late cut right there, especially to the inside batters, left handed batters. It's a little late, it's just enough to get a little jam. Tell you what, right now, Trevor Goss got pinpoint control with all his pitches. And like you mentioned, the cutter has become the primary weapon for him, which was not always the case. Most recent season, 2020, he used it just 8% of the time. Has that up to 39%. And look who it is, pinch hitter Nick Gordon going after the first one. And Andrew McCutcheon finds it. Two quick outs. It's Byron Buxton. First time in the All Star game for Byron Buxton coming up. Excited to see him over there. I don't Put think it's going to be the last. I wish he joined the home run derby. Yeah. Yeah, he would be a fun guy to have. I feel like he'll participate. I in think the so too. He would be a lot of fun. He could put on a show. He's got 23 bombs. He's a perfect guy, right? Woo! Why not? Come on, Bucks. Let's go. Maybe next year in Let's Seattle. Horn. I want to see a cha cha <laughs> <laughs> on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy hack. That is. So he's had a streaky season. Yeah. Another yeah. cooler period yeah, for him lately. We were talking about that earlier too, and. It's intriguing, right? It's like deceptive because he's slugging, his OPS is up, uh, his RBIs are up as well. But he does so many great things. And he went around. He's six for his last 57 right now. It's only a matter of time. It could happen later in this game, but for now, Trevor got with an outstanding performance. Three up, three down in the sixth. We stay here. Amy G with a very special guest who you've been watching and now you get to hear from. This is so, you never know what you're going to find at a baseball game. And we found this guy, Kickley, who is the resident artist here for the Twins. And you're looking at one of his paintings from today, just one. Of course, the fifth inning, fantastic catch by Celestino. He just busted that out. So Kickley, tell us a little bit about the process. How did you combine your love of art with your love of the Twins? Well, 
Uh, we got, me and my family got COVID over the winter and uh, it sucked uh, for two weeks. And then my brother invited me to a Minnesota Wild game, which then started me painting sports. And then the twin season was just right around the corner. So I wanted to get the whole season, you know. What you do is almost hard to wrap my head around. And anybody thinking that he takes photographs and then paints them later, that's not what happens. I, I got in on the action too. He just did this in like 10 minutes. So tell us a little bit about your process. Do you take a photograph in your mind? Yeah, I, I normally, I try and uh, memorize the, the motion or the action. And then as soon as that's uh, captured on uh, canvas or paper, I dump that information for the next one. And this is kind of French Impressionism. I mean, my, my art knowledge isn't great, but it's very, it resembles Monet. Um, where did you learn that skill set? Well, I studied in France after a car accident about seven years ago. Um, I, I just, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't draw like, I, like before the accident, and I started painting first, and so I was what they call a museum rat. And I just spent uh, all my time in the museums uh, doing study paintings. So he's wearing Jeffers glove as a muse, and you can find all of his work on YouTube. Quickly, what is that? Uh, it's just Kickly at YouTube. Kickly at YouTube, gentlemen. Amy G, that's awesome. And how about that keepsake for Amy G? I, I want him to do one of me. Yeah, can, can he set us up? <laughs> can you Document see us? Document the season? See us. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need to give him some binoculars, no. perhaps. That's awesome. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you, Amy G. And I'm a fan of museums. Yeah. Like museums, yeah. Well, again, when you're in New York pretty often, you have quite the menu. There it is. Ah, that is fantastic. Perfect. Great job. You Amy. got to keep that, right, Amy? I hope Woo! so, right? I think she is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Reading minds. <laughs> Let's start the seventh. There it is. Documented. A ball and two strikes on Jace Peterson. Bottom third of the order for Craig Council's lineup. Look at that. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's right on. Great shot Woo. right there. It's ad lib art. It's quick. Yep. Oh. A check. Pitch. He's good. Yeah, very good pitch. <laughs> From Caleb Thielbar. Jace Peterson, a do-it-all guy for the Brewers. He can play just about anywhere. And he strikes out. Breaking stuff in the zone from Thielbar. And that's his second strikeout today. Man, he's looked sharp, huh? Got oh, yeah. Riding fastball, that good slider. And he's an incredible story. He was out of the game for a long time talking about Thielbar. There's Gordon who pinch hit and now replaces Celestino in center field. What a day. Do you know how long it was between pitches in the bigs for Caleb Thielbar? I'm talking April 2015 and then not back in the bigs until August of 2020. Wow. That one into the corner, garlic chasing foul ball. He thought about quitting every year. I remember I talked to him about it a few years ago. He gave a lot of credit uh, emotionally talking about his wife for supporting him through independent ball for a long time. Wow. His wife's a, I think if she's still doing it, a hoops coach, college hoops coach. So there's a lot of sports talk in the fam, but also a deep understanding of the adversity and what it takes to get back into the big leagues, which Caleb has been able to do very successfully. A nice last few years in Major League Baseball for him. Great stuff. How about the Twins mascot, top of the uh, <laughs> dugout? TC. Is he distracting? He, he's you? just he, he's messing around with all the fans, all the kids, having a good time, just walking, you know, hanging out, saying what's up to the kids. Nothing like it. I, I, you know, and when I play defense too on the field, I was a, I always was mesmerized by by the mascots. Always enjoyed them. I like Orbit in Houston. Thought he was fun. TC's a good one too. 
you got? My favorite? Orbit. Orbit? Yeah, I like Orbit. He's too. like. I'm out! He's got some cool kicks on. Look at his kicks. Yeah. I'm no. <laughs> He's taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> He's got swag. He does. He got High heat. Caleb Thielbar with a strikeout above the zone with the fastball. Great stuff today by him. Oh, yeah. I'm going to shout out his wife, too. I mentioned her earlier. got more details. She's still coaching South Dakota State. Wow. Carissa probably watching right now. Thielbar, 28 pitches, 17 strikes. He was filthy. Great day for Caleb Thielbar, and we're seeing the battle of the bullpens. It is on. Border battle continues on YouTube. A 1-1 game. Two outs in the seventh. We'll be right back. Thinking some Beyonce in the dugout right now. And he's also, what, the fourth member of our broadcast team today? He is. <laughs> How you doing? Good, man. Good, man. You good? Ooh, I don't know. Hey, you doing it, man. Hey, keep doing it. Hey, you got three, three hands, too. Damn. Hey, man. Felicidades in the All-Star game, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's big. I love that. I like that a little Spanish felicidades for the All-Star game. That's awesome, man. That's the beauty of playing at first base. You get to see all the boys, man. They all come around and they're all, you know what? Most of the time they're all happy. They got a hit. <laughs> they got a hit. Yeah. You had the best gig. I did. The former All-Star Yonder Alonso sitting next to me in. Now that's a gig right there. Me sitting next to you. That huh. I love. I'm that blessed gig. that I'm here sitting next to you, the no. voice of YouTube. Scotty the Pete. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and we'll also be calling the Futures game this weekend. What's he together. getting? That's a bar. That's a bar. I don't know what kind. A protein bar? A protein bar for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I see the chocolate chips. Good yeah. touch. Touch. Jonathan Davis. Breaking Woo! ball in there from Jax, who is Slung using the slider Slung way more this year. Grasshoppers. Oh, please. We're good. I just lost my appetite. Yeah. Uh, here's a few really good in Seattle. I do hear there's really good Indian food. Amy G, she's got it all covered. In Minneapolis? Yeah, believe it or not, yeah. It's at the ballpark, oh, at the though. ballpark? Yeah, at the ballpark. What inning is this? I don't even know what inning is Seven. this. <laughs> I'm saying, let's order it up. I don't know if we've got time. Two outs in the seventh. Jonathan Davis, base is empty for Milwaukee. Quiet day for the lineups today. Oh, yes, he won. He went around. Does it have anything to do with the fact that these guys were on a field for over five hours yesterday so. with three rain delays? Also, the pitching has been supreme. So let's stretch and then keep rolling with the Brewers and Twins. Have to make it still with at your one one. Yeah. 
el boxeador Bosinger. The World Baseball Classic is back. Qualifying rounds for the 2023 World Baseball Classic takes place September 10th through October 5th in Panama City, Panama, and Regensburg, Germany. For more info, for more info, info visit worldbaseballclassic.com. Nailed it. And download it. the MLB app to get video <laughs> highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your favorite team and players. One more. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Wow, that is incredible. See, if I read that again, uh, can I see that? <laughs> if I read that, I would just say, this copyright telecast present blah, 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 without express written consent. We're good. <laughs> Hey, you nailed the cities. Wow. Regensburg, Germany. That's a tough one. Huh? I have to say, I do not I know mean, where that is. We're going to find out. It's we'll part of the World Baseball one. Classic. Our producer, rocking back to back to back readers. Nailed it. Let's do the home seven. Brad Boxberger in the game for Milwaukee. And for Brewers fans, here's the good news. None of your high leverage guys have been overused lately. So they're all ready. Woo! They're all coming Boxberger, in hot. Boxberger. Milner had some command issues yesterday, but was able to escape. And then definitely, of course, Devin Williams, who's been unstoppable, and the great Josh Hader. Two, three, and four well, on the traded. docket for Minnesota, starting with Correa. I got traded with Boxberger. Cincinnati to San Diego together. Oh, that was Andy that big Andy deal. Monty Grandal, Edison Volquez, great guy. Boxberger, great cutter, good changeup. Well, Unique arm angle and this is his 11th season. In long, the bigs. Long. Kind of, I don't want to say resurrected, but he's become almost all star caliber again when early on in his, his career he was an all star closer. He's been great for Milwaukee yeah. for a second consecutive year. Uh, 265 ERA, 32 strikeouts, and 34 innings pitch. You know what he does? He just misses barrels. That's what he does. He's, he's not going to wow you with anything. You look at his video and you're just like, oh, there's the man. He's getting ready, uh -oh. getting that left wing ready. He's just not going to wow you. A lot of miss hit balls. Nothing special, but command has always been there. That's, that's something he's always had. Command. No matter how hard he was throwing or you know his uses with his cutter. His curveball has changed. He's always had that really good command. He just he doesn't miss the plate. He's always in the corners. All-star 2015. He led the American League in saves, 41 that year. Ball four to Correa. And leadoff man out. is on for Minnesota. Hader Williams. Two of the top three in strikeouts per nine. Just in case he doesn't enter the game, and Hader is an all-star, I'm going to wax poetic about Devin Williams for a moment. There's not much more he could do to prove that he should be in his first all-star game. He did not make the cut. Maybe there'll be a pitcher that needs to be replaced. That earns him his spot. 24 consecutive scoreless appearances for Williams. He leads the league and holds. <laughs> ZRA is south of two, and like we just showed you, he's a top three strikeout artist. But you know, those things always give it. At some point, it's going to happen. He's going to get rewarded. 
they, they've done a great job with the all-star teams and, and the games the league has done where, where the right guys are the ones that are supposed to go. I think he'll be there. This year? Yeah. Okay. I think when it's all said and done, he'll be there. He deserves it. Do we see Polanco fly to right I again just thinking for that. the fourth time? He's going to get a cutter. He's going to get something to pull. That's how they play him. Pitchers count. No, he's going out of place. So There's still a chance. And Max Kepler is on deck, by the way, to pinch hit for Garland. There he is. Out of Germany? That's correct. Right, you just mentioned his home country. Hosting some World Baseball Classic action next year. Yeah. Going to that change up. There it is. Oh, oh. Nope. Tip. Stays alive. Back to yesterday, 13th home run of the season was a solo smash off a 3 1 fastball, 92 down the pipe. Did not miss it from Jason Alexander. Since coming off the injured list on June 28th, his slugging percentage is 674 entering the day. 389 slug before the IL. This is the Jorge Polanco we know from the past few years. Powerful second baseman. He has spent all nine seasons with the Twins. Mm -hmm. Very durable. Very. Ooh. Watch your lips. I'll wake you up. Little front side cutter right there. Oh boy. One, two. One two is shot to center. Davis chasing towards the wall, tracking it and oh. finding it. He's got it. And Correa has to scurry back to first. Oh man. A long way to go for Jonathan Davis to secure the baseball. That first step was incredible. He was shading him to right center. As soon as that ball was hit, this is the way you do it. You put your head down, you go to the spot, you understand it's gonna be a bang bang, the wall's in play. Look at him go on this first step. Boom, there he goes. He reads it, he puts his head down, and now he's going to go to the spot. Go get it. Boom. Highlight reel after highlight reel. Great. Oh, man, that is unbelievable. He is so good at going back for the baseball, just like the play we showed from about a week ago. Wow. Two thirds of the time that's wow. a hit according to Statcast. And today we are witnessing a clinic in center field from both sides. Well, I can't believe it. You know, they called him up and they said, hey, you're a guy, you need you need to control all of center field. And he certainly has done that every single day. He has I'm an on. opportunity. I just love the route that he takes. You understand he's gonna get crushed. Up, he tries to protect himself, but with that speed. You know it's going to be a bang bang. You can't stop. Full goal right there. He's got some face of the padding. Face to face on a padding. Just incredible. <laughs> the hat on. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that is a first class hat shake. Get rid of the dirt out there. Sweet. That was awesome. Over 400 feet, it's a home run in 12 ballparks, not this one. Target field holds it. Pinch hitter Max Kepler facing a 2-1 count now from Boxberger one. with one out. One. Austin Kleschka in the live chat. Wow, the range. Sports Gaming Universe, Polanco was robbed. Oh my goodness. He's right about that premier range right there. Our creator spotlight today, Sportstorm. There you are. Said, I'm sensing a walk off, not going to lie. 
shaping out to be. It's possible. Who's problem for Minnesota? They've created plenty of traffic, just not able to convert. Yeah. Besides Celestino back in the second with the RBI single, they've left runners on in almost every inning, all but the sixth. Nine guys. Foul ball. Right, nine left on. They went four consecutive innings, leaving two runners on base. Oh, that's the best smile. Foul ball secure. Splits for Kepler better against righties. Max fouled the ball off his leg yesterday. It hit the armor, but he had to lead the game. Good to see him back in there. Those hurt, man, even if you got the pad on. There it is. It doesn't look like it's you know going to prevent a hammer from doing some damage which would be a foul ball off the foot looks like maybe an inch of thickness yeah but they they help I, I always it helps. wore one yeah I always wore one I mean you still feel it but but you can at least survive the at bat Ripped right Here field and Kepler's in business in the corner Here we go. heading to third and being waved home and stopping at third Tommy Watkins says, well, hold up. Just kidding. And he was going to be absolutely fried. That's a good decision right there. Not sending him, especially with one out. If there's two outs, he would have probably sent him. But with one out, you got to keep that intact right there. Second and third. They did everything right right here. The defense for the Milwaukee Brewers. They hit all their cuts. They had all the right routes. Not much Korea could do right there. One out double for Kepler. All over it. Tommy Watkins, third base coach. He's reading it. Look, he gets in the right angle right there. So he can see him. So Correa can see him. And right at the last second, he holds him. I love when the third base coaches, they're understanding the runner. So they want to get down the line. So that way you can see their heads and they can see you back to back. Now, that third base coach is all the way more towards the left field line. You can't see him. You lose him. So as he's coming around, it's a good job by the third base coach right there, getting middle of the third of the way home. So that way, when he's looking up, he can see. If he needs to stop you right away, he stops you. If not, he can just keep you, keep you going. He needs to be agile. A third Very base agile. Coach. Yeah, third base coach has they to move. move. Yep. You got to be able to move. You got to give give an angle to to your runner, so that way, when you can have that right angle and seeing the play and seeing the runner when to stop him or when not to, those are good good moves right there by the third base coach. Infield in right now. Only one job to do, right? Get the ball up. Anything up, you're swinging. Big spot for Jose Miranda. Boxberger certainly needs to strike out right here. You don't want to. You don't want to face the raker in Arias coming up next. And there's strike one. The pitch right there. Catches the corner. Yeah, because Arias did not start the day, he's in an unusual spot in the lineup card, which could be a very timely position in the order. Yeah, and the Milwaukee's bullpen right now, it is as hot as it gets. If they can have three guys warming up, they would have had three guys. Right now they got only two. Both of those guys are getting hot and quickly. A ball and a strike to the rookie, Jose Miranda. Entering today, best baseball since the middle of last month. OPS north of 900 in that time period, and there he goes left side foul. And two strikes against him. A strange 1-1 changeup right on right right there, which you normally don't see from Boxberger. 
but he feels good enough that he wants to get him off that fastball. It's just been slider cutter heavy with that changeup. That's a good pitch right there, a good usage right there, getting him to one two. Now he's got windows to go. He can go up the ladder, he can go to that cutter down and away, or again that changeup down and hopefully he bites her on, on a bad pitch. Try to go up. This is a situation that 1 1 count with that changeup. Now it puts everything in play. If he threw him the changeup, he might throw it again. So all you're looking at as a hitter right now in Miranda is just getting your sights up completely. Anything up, anything up. The only thing you don't want to do here is strike out. He won't strike out, but he'll pop this one up. Infield, shortstop, Adamas. Just as good as a strikeout. Yeah. And the second out. Big pitch from Boxberger. This is a pick your poison right here. Do you walk him and just give him four intentionally? What would you do? I would walk him. I would just give him four. Not even mess around with it. He's earned a right. They understand how, how crucial he is. Yep. Craig Council said we're good. Yeah. Let him go. It of course does put more pressure. It's a veteran though on Boxberger. You can't walk in a run here. That's right. First base now occupied by the All Star. And it's up to Ryan Jeffers. Are they going to make a change? Milner and Suter. Looks like Suter. I think Boxberger's got this guy. And Suter will be for the next guy. Yeah, this is his last guy. He's thrown 24 pitches. Continue Ryan. to make pitches, and that's what he's been doing. Ryan Jeffers has homered in back to back games that he's been a part of. Up the middle, tough hop for Wong. He's got it. Dives into the bag, and he got him. Inning over. Wins the foot race against the rise. Had to make a quick call and decided the best place to go was right in front of him. Great play. Gold Glover over there. Traps it in the heel of the glove and beats him. Bases loaded, not able to capitalize. Colton Wong makes a huge play up the middle. Google Cloud is powering StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball. Yeah, take a deep breath. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it all onto the broadcast. Ride this wave with us. Border battle. Minnesota versus Wisconsin. Plenty of Brewers fans in the house as well. As we climb into the eighth. First place Twins one, first place Brewers one. 
Yeah, you want to go back to that play last play by Wong. Made. It took a funny hop. Good hands. Of course, he leads off the inning here, too. Right. Try and start a rally for the crew. It's a good play. Starts the, the rally right now. Do you want to see that play again? I would love to. I know. It, it was such a tricky play because you had the bag in the way, you had the pitcher in the way, you had the bag in the way, and then you had a, an in between short hop. But he had those soft hands, man. You know, he's gotten better and better as his career have gone by on his defensive side. He has turned himself into a really, really good, solid second baseman. Pulled it right side. Polanco puts him away. I know some people that can hook you up with that play. Want oh, it? let me see it. Yeah, it was a tough play. It was a bang bang play. You know, you have a good runner. He got handcuffed right there. Look at him and stay in the air right now. He knows it's going to be a tight, tight race right there. Just a good all around play right there. Protect yourself. Fearless play right there by both guys. Takes a hit. Willie Adamas. An extra base hit streak is on the line. Five straight games. Second most home runs. Actually tops on the team. How about Captain Jacks? Huh? Yeah, Griffin Jacks on the mound again for the eighth. And this is a career year for him so far. He's still a captain at the U.S. Air Force. Yeah, in the Air Reserve. Force Reserve. Yeah. I think his wife is as well. That's right. Father Garth, 10 Come seasons on. in the NFL, linebacker with the Cardinals and Cowboys. You seen Top Gun? No. You haven't seen, seen that Top a few Gun? weeks ago. Man, it's really good. I don't have time to get to the theater right now. On the road, can you get me a copy to watch at home? Uh, it's, there's a copyright situation. <laughs> 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 copyright. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do the read next time. <laughs> <laughs> copyright. <laughs> copyright. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> We mentioned how it's busy today. Like looking out in front of us, behind home plate, and then extended down the first and third base side. We have the wave going on. We also have the first Twins sellout of the season. Almost 39,000. Reaching for one off the end of the bat. Correa, dark, two outs. are a top five home run hitting team in Major League Baseball. Twins are top ten. Well, he can do this for you. Hit yeah. a homer right now. Both sides. 17 for the year. Seeking a magic swing. Ooh. Ball one to Raddy Telez who was acquired last year. You know it was crazy the maneuvering by the front office. It's the May trade to bring on Willie Adamas. They also picked up Trevor Richards in that deal and then flipped him to Toronto in July of last year for Telez. Where well, Telez was in a, in, a, in a tough situation right in Toronto with Guerrero and all that. But we look at his spray chart here with doubles and homers the exact same amount. I mean and, and we know he's a slugger it's from center to right for the most part. Hits the ball on the nose and believe it or not has a really good eye for, for swinging at the right pitches. We talked with Craig Council in the past and he's talked about you know the problem with him he doesn't swing and miss. 
like we see right there, where most guys are going to swing and miss, he actually puts them on play. Yeah, it's a great problem, but at times you're swinging outside of the zone and it's not the quality of contact you're looking for. I see what you're saying. Mid eight, Brewers and Twins hanging on one run per side. Time for the best back end of a bullpen in baseball. Devin Williams and Josh Hader. This is not a lead for Milwaukee. It is a tie game. 1 1 in Minnesota. Devin Williams. Sparkling numbers on the year. Someone also just asked in the chat. Julian goes, Does anyone know who's commentating? Scott Brown, Yonder, Alonzo, and Amy G with you. Also a mic'd up Andrew McCutcheon. But the line for Williams is supreme and he is riding a scoreless appearance streak 24 consecutive appearances without giving up a run and here he goes change up fastball cutter for the most part you're going to see more change ups throwing them 54 percent of the time fastball at like 94 95 miles an hour it's going to be a heavy side fastball but look for him to continue to use that change up for me this is a guy that's one of the best in the game if not the best it is going to be phenomenal to watch it is an absolute ride and get ready to see this. It's that quick chat to yourself right that quick line or two that he does before facing his first batter. Usually works for him. Yesterday three up three down on nine pitches. Is the movement that he's got he's very deceptive long and lanky. It looks like he's not even throwing. He's just trying to play catch, but it's 94, 95, and boy, oh boy, when he throws that changeup, which he can throw at any count. Everything moves a ton. That fastball had serious bite to it. Right there. There it is. That's that changeup. The airbender. It is a tough at bat. Stay hydrated. Kirilov takes strike one. Of course, he's going to be facing two lefties in this inning. Look at this motion right here. That is funky. So he grips that changeup, that circle changeup. Screwball. Kind of screwball. The old school area. crowd would yep. call it. You know, with a person, with a guy like this and Devin Williams as a hitter, you have to pick one or the other. You know, if you don't have two strikes, you have to guess primarily. I'm not, I wasn't so much of a guess hitter, but for me, it's a situation where you're saying, hey, it's either one or the other. You either got to sit on the changeup or you got to sit on the heater. And the reason for that is because there's so much differences in, in miles an hour where he throws his fastball at 94 and his changeup at 80. That's a 14 mile an hour difference. Kirilov smokes that one into right over the head of Wong. And a single to start the Twins' eighth. 
You want to talk about using your lower half on a changeup and staying within yourself. That was the swing right there that he took. It was a changeup, as we can see right there. It's low and away. Look at that back knee going and driving down on the ground, using gravity as the force to stay locked in right there. Just a good piece of hitting, staying nice and short, understanding that the changeup is Devin Williams' best pitch. Surely got a good one there, and he put a good swing on it. The former first rounder with the MLB draft coming up this weekend. Kirilov on for Nick Gordon. We see a bun here. Would you? Late in the game like this, I wouldn't mind it. I'm with you. Pulls back. Oh. That missed. Two sack bunts this year for Nick Gordon. He wanted to. These are the role players and the glue players, right, that, that need winning teams. In a situation like this, a tough guy that he's facing, 1-0, you can possibly do a hit and run here. He can possibly bump for a hit here. There's a lot of situations that Rock Bardelli can use him right now. Hi! I will lead towards the bun sign. You think so? I will lead towards the bun. If I'm him, the reason for it, the hit and run situation is such a tough, tough call because he does have swing and miss stuff, right? He can throw a changeup right now and be fooled. Automatic now it's a one two count and a strikeout or an out on the bases. I, I would lean more towards the bunt and bunt for a base hit, not just give yourself up. Give it a chance. He swings and misses through the fastball. Now the sign from your third base coach is best of luck, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> This is the hottest it's reliever like the, in the sport. It's like the Bee Gees. Stayed alive. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> That's right. That's all I'm thinking right now. Oh, God. Oh Do God, your oh best. Changeup probably coming. Up the ladder. Fastball. One around. That's what a changeup does to you right there. It speeds you up completely. You start double guessing yourself. This should be a fun matchup right here. Devin Williams against Byron Buxton. Game on the line. I liked the bunt effort if it was possible. Yeah. We all win in the commentary section going, bunt, corners are back. <laughs> it's not that easy, Scott. <laughs> I know, especially <laughs> against this guy. Now Buxton's turn. Yeah, I was getting ready to say at some point right now, I would like to see some movement. Stolen, stolen bag right now. Puts a little pressure, especially with one out on the Milwaukee defense. Buxton's 0 for 4. He has struck out three times. Peter Count, pick one or the other. Went through it and tipped it back into Caratini's glove. It is so deceptive. The life on it, it's, it, it's late life. It's a riding into your hands type of fastball. You see it there, and on next, next thing you know, it's in your hands on top of you. It's deceptive to pick up, especially with that changeup. You have to respect the changeup. Buxton's seen him twice in his career. 0 for 2. That's another thing. Two punch too. outs. There's not that much history. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> man. Great paint. One, two. Analysis from the great pitching ninja. Nasty. He goes, 
that airbender makes this fastball so much harder to hit. Hitters hit less than 100 against the fastball. So of course, like you said, they have to look for the airbender. And now you got so many ways, right? You can go up the ladder, continue to go up, continue to maybe a change up here. Two count, it's a good count to run on. I want to see everything. I want to get jammed if I'm Byron Buxton right now. See it as deep as possible. Use the right field as my best friend. A good swing right there. Is that the thought process? Yeah, that there? was the thought process right there. That's a good swing right there. The intent was there, the approach was there. It, it's understanding the pitch first and then reacting to it. You don't have to guess, you can stay short. Mechanically, he's very sound right now. And that's why he probably missed it. It was 95 miles an hour, it was very short. You see that he didn't really have a leg kick. He just kind of put his foot down, read the baseball, and went and attacked it. Got him geared for a changeup. 2 2 on its way. Yeah, yeah missed with the changeup. Now, everything's in play here, though, too, right? Three Runners two. might not be going because he does have strikeout stuff, but it could be a changeup or a fastball. I think that 2 2 count right there with that changeup was a good pitch selection by Devin Williams because now he puts it in the back of his head. Hey, he could throw this heater right now. I'm sitting heater up in the zone. Not, again, not trying to do too much. Even though it's three two, you're winning the at bat. Continue to use your two strike approach. Whiff. Second strike out of the inning for Williams. Filthy, filthy, absolutely filthy. Talk about the pitch sequence and what he was trying to do. Right off the get go, he started him off with a changeup, which later on we'll talk about. Changeup with that two fastballs up. Then he went to work here. He tried to see if he was aggressive enough. That's the pitch he wants back in Byron Buxton. But this 3 2 changeup right here is what he started him off with to get first strike, and he finished him off with the 3 2. Absolutely masterful. Carlos Correa first pitch is sharply to short and Adamas takes care of the lead runner at second. It's really interesting to look back at that sequence. Buxton had one pitch to hit. That was it. Not forget it. Nothing else is touchable. Big league. The usual from Devin Williams.
Hey, the Twins YouTube channel is your destination for highlights and behind the scenes footage. Visit youtube.com slash twins or Brewers fans, youtube.com slash Brewers for exclusive interviews, original content, and more. And you're all here with us on the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube. Craig Council, using that brain today. Which team will have a tighter division race? Poll closed. Winner, Milwaukee, NL Central. I agree. I agree. I think the Cardinals and Brewers will be really tight to the finish line. I think there's a chance that the Twins have a battle with a team like the White Sox down the stretch, even though technically Cleveland is ahead of them. But I'm, I'm with you. I think it's more of a sure thing that St. Louis and Milwaukee are quite evenly matched. I agree. Ready for the Joan Duran experience. Oh man, another experience right here. <laughs> Talking about a hundred mile an hour fastball, a good splitter. Splitter he calls a splinker. And, and, and with his stuff, this is as, as good as he gets. Boy, oh boy, Milwaukee. Another ride right now. It's about to get interesting. They've been pushing the Durantula nickname. 101. Oh. Upper left hand corner of the zone to start Andrew McCutcheon's at bat. Cutch with a single last time up in the sixth. Ooh. You see McCutcheon there. <laughs> he checks swing, looked at Jordan, first base umpire. He says, Yep, I went. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred plus. He does it more than anyone. More than the starters. McCutcheon up the middle. Polanco. One out. There he is. Oh, this is fun for us. We Josh just get Hader. to watch some of the best relievers in baseball. In a tie game, though. It's incredible with the shift where back then they used to be a base hit up the middle. And now it's just not. I mean, he put some a good swing on that. Going back to the dugout saying, man, oh man. Pedro Severino fouls off 101. Oof. You're not doing much with that pitch. Uh, top corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, he asked if that was in the zone. He said yes. It was in the corner. Top corner. Severino walked in the sixth. Fouls off another 102. Well, Duran's got the good stuff today. It does. I remember, so last time I spoke to Rocco Baldelli about Duran, he taught me more about the splinker. splinker. Splitter plus sinker. Splitter action, but you're like, wait, it's at 96? <laughs> Severino finds that one down the line. Served up right over the heart of the plate, and he's heading for two, and he's there easily as Kirilov has to grab it on a funny hop. One out double for Severino. And you can hear it's loud in here because Brewers fans are in the house this afternoon. Yeah, I think the pitch sequence right there was the, the incorrect one. Obviously, he's standing up at second, but you sped him up. You, you had him with two fastballs. He was fighting the fastball. He was late on the fastball, and all of a sudden, he kind of sped him up with that slider. He just did him a favor, especially a guy like Duran who's throwing 101 miles an hour. I, I'll die with my best stuff, and that's 100, 101 miles an hour. And look at Severino. He sees it in the corners. Oh, oh wait, just a double. Oh, what? Three. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Cutch was thinking what we're thinking. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not too far around second, please. Mike Brasso is going to replace him on the bags. There he is. <laughs> Relax. Luis Arias. Well, he's a fastball hitter, and Arias, he's going to get some fastballs right now. Last that bat with runners in scoring position, he got a ton of sliders. He wasn't really ready for that. 
101 miles an hour. You got to respect it. Have it in the back of the head, though, that he does have a really good splitter to go with. But 1 0 count, I mean, you should see Heater right now. You see the stuff it, it just pops and you're thinking. How did the Diamondbacks give up this talent back in 2018 deadline deal Eduardo Escobar moved over to Arizona. And this was the prize for the twins. They were very high on his potential. He was an a ball at the time and said. There's some untapped velocity if they can. Tweak the mechanics they did. It worked. Oh. Around the zone, too. I mean, I'm giving him the green light right season. here. 3 0. It's a good chance to take a hack right now. Good call. If it's right there, do some damage with it. Yeah, he doesn't walk many batters. He's Be careful. He was swinging. Oh. oh. Say he, it. he was swinging, but thank you very much from Durant. <laughs> oh, very generous. Oh, very generous. How about the stance right there? He knew. He thought it was he had ball four. Oh, it was heading towards the zone. He was tailed away or tailed in. And the stuff there is, is just the stuff he's got right now in Durant is just phenomenal. Plus plus stuff. It's full the ump stuff. Another heater in. Down the pipe. That's the splinker. Yeah, we need a two minute timeout. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. That's, uh, that's the splinker right there. Don't envy that. Ouch. No. Do you cringe? Yeah, I, this, I cringe. you know what it is? This is the cartoons. You know when you see the little birdies? Yeah. That's that's exactly what they see. That's exactly what the catchers are seeing right now. Just uh. little birdies everywhere. <laughs> oh, this we pump? Do. Let's do this. Pump. Let's go. It's I don't pump know up how they pitcher. do it, man. There's the defense for Minnesota. Severino one out double. Brasso pinch running. Full boat to Urias. Heater's got to be a heater. Ball four. And that's ball four. Borderline and two on now for Milwaukee. Very close call. Went splitter again. Splinker. Oh, did you see him? Did you see him? <laughs> Gotch is putting on a show in the dugout today. <laughs> did you see him? Did you see him? I think he was talking about the home plate umpire. Smooth with it. Or Arias going, Arias. I'm not hitting that anyway. Yeah. So. He was smooth with it, taking that ball four. Yeah. You make the call. Okay. What are you doing with that pitch? At best, maybe fouling it off the I, hands? I would just take it. Exactly. Because I probably wouldn't see it. I'm so geeked up on 100 miles an hour. Throw me a splitter like that. Oh, God. 96 mile an hour splitter. Oh, wow. <laughs> you go face a up guy like that, and you're just hoping for four balls before three. <laughs> <laughs> Taking my chances. Mission accomplished by Arias. Pass it to Jace Peterson. He's got a bomb already today. That's right. It's the only damage for the Milwaukee offense today. Ooh. It's Jace Peterson. Gracias. Yes. Jace had a nice day yesterday. Keeping the momentum going. 
Oh, and that's a strike? Well, I think it's kind of, with it. yeah, kind of going one for the hitter, oh, one for the pitcher on the borderline. Out there. That one goes, the other one doesn't. It speaks okay. to the precision of Duran. He's down there. He's living down there. It's a good pitch, though. You want that as a pitcher. It's a hitter, not so much. Peterson right side, chopper Play. going a second for back. one. Correa back to first, and they double him up. Textbook D from the Twins. The textbook D did the deed. And it was a rise with that strong throw, that strike to Correa, and then Correa showing off that absolute cannon. Look at him get it. Gather himself with his feet and throw an absolute strike. And then here we go. Boom. Bullseye. Inning over. Nothing comes across for Milwaukee. Bottom nine. Some in the chat calling for a walk off. Man, it might happen. With two on, get the ground ball you need. Duran did exactly that. Jace, Jace Peterson to arise to Correa. Bullet back to first. Dang it. <laughs> Mic'd up Andrew McCutcheon, including sound effects from that mega Yeti that he has. Don't break your heart. Double plays like that late in the game. Twenty twenty two All Star Josh Hader. Four time All Star. Not way more. It's Polanco, Kepler, Miranda. Three, four, and five on board for Minnesota. Oh, Josh Hader, he's faced 1,200 batters in his career. He struck out 534 of them. This is electric stuff coming at you. Strike out potential at any given time. Really good command with his fastball, his slider. If you're thinking about the big leagues and you're watching the game today, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a safe situation, but he leads the major leagues in saves with 27 of them. Look at the stuff that we've seen in the late stages of this game. From the bullpens of both sides. Oh, this is postseason arms coming in today. It's a 1 1 ball game. They're scratching and clawing for runs, scratching and clawing for hits, let alone. But this is what postseason baseball kind of feels like. Three straight out of the zone from Hader. Very I'm rare. going red light here. What about you? Yeah, you, you need some guys on right now. Strike one. Woo! You're going to get another one, more than not. This is the situation right here with Polanco where he's thinking, okay, this is my chance right here. This is my turn. If I get another heater, 
They're going to be out in front. If it's a slider, swing through it, move on to the 3 2 count. There you go. There it is. That probably would have been ball four, but. See where you're going. The three time Trevor Hoffman reliever of the year in the National League. The slider plays right now, this 3 2 count. I think Polanco understands that because he threw it to him 3 1. Went with the heater instead. Scoreless ninth yesterday for Josh Hader, 27th save of the season. That was a 6 3 W for Milwaukee. Back to the slider. I would. I Back agree. Foot. Yep. Did he go? No, ball four. First time reaching today for Jorge Polanco. It's a really good at bat right there. Laid off that slider. Had to see it up. I don't think he went either. <laughs> From that angle. Okay, here we go. Oh, man. I think he went. You do? Yeah. It's the thing with the black bats. They're hard to see. You just don't know enough. So that's an advantage. It's an advantage, especially if you're playing in a day game. If you're, if it's a night game, it could be a little harder as well. But then you're taking the risk and putting it in somebody else's hands. For for me, I wouldn't want to do that. Kepler doubled in the seventh. That's when he entered the game for Kyle Garlick. Last four appearances right there for Josh Hader. A little blip. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Three earned in four appearances. Three earned in his first 27 appearances. And it's over Wong's head and into right field. Kepler with a single. Polanco to second. First two reaching for Minnesota off the all world closer for Milwaukee. Good piece of hitting. Good piece of hitting right there. I try to do too much. That's the approach I think it gets, if it's a lefty lefty against Hader. I, I, I'm trying to pull him. I'm trying to see the ball out on me for me to pull it. If, if it's away from me, I want nothing to do with it. If it's more at me, that those are the ones that I, I'm, I'm going for. And Kevin certainly did that right there. Not easy to string hits together against the man on the mound, but. I'm intrigued right now. This is not a bunt situation. This is a situation where they're leaving it up to Miranda to, to go in and try to win this game for you because we talked about it. We got the Raker behind. All right. Yeah, give yourself three chances for a hit to score a run. Do we have a pitch comp problem? Well, we do have a pretty loud ballpark yeah, today. Is. You know, I was thinking when Joe Maurer was with us in the booth about four innings ago and he was talking to us about the Metrodome with 60,000. I'm going, there is no way anyone is hearing anything from the Pitchcom device, which is telling you what pitch your catcher wants to go with.
I'm jumping early on the first pitch I see. I want to look at I'm sitting fastball up in the zone. Anything any slider that starts up in the zone as well. I'm full go. I just have to make sure I'm seeing it up in my window where I want to hit it. The approach is middle of the field. The righty Miranda. Oh. oh. Expecting strike one. That was a good pitch right there. That's a good take right there as well by Miranda. That's not a pitch you want to swing at. That looked good to me. Yeah. I think Miranda was expecting it to be a strike. Yeah. You know how you'll pull back differently if it's back to back one? slider. In the air, lifted deep left. Miranda ends this ball game. Double deck, three run blast, game over. The Twins crack the code against the all world closer. Jose Miranda, take a bow. Unbelievable. He took the first pitch slider down, got another slider up in the zone, and he did not miss it whatsoever. Boy, he's had really good at bats today. The biggest one of all, the three run homer. He is pumped, huh? Best memory of his young big league career. Walk off against Hader, and it's a homer. Three for five, three RBIs for the day. Boy, he's putting together a really, really solid year. Might be the easiest YouTube player of the game <laughs> we've ever had. There's that slider. We see it. It just hung. It didn't do much up in the zone. We talked about it. I'm swinging. I'm aggressive. If it's a slider up in the zone, I'm all the way demolishing it. And he knew it. Look at him walk it off. That's right. Let him know. Let him know, young fella. Oh, he did it. Second deck. What a smash by Jose Miranda to end the day. Victorious for Minnesota as they split the series. Little two gamer with Milwaukee. Oh, and he is getting crushed right now in a good way by his teammates for a second time. Ice bat feels good on a hot day. Fifth walk off home run this season for the Minnesota Twins and their 49th win of the year. Miranda did this against the Orioles not too long ago. No. July the second. Player of the game very simple Celestino or Miranda. I mean come on. I'm going from the man from Manatee, Puerto Rico, Jose Miranda. Ready for the post game Let's show? Let's do it. MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube post game show. Yes, second walk off hit of Jose Miranda's rookie career and the first walk off home run. He had a walk off hit against the Orioles July the second this time doing damage with the power bat a three run home run off none other than Josh Hader. How rare is it to get to Josh Hader with that kind of power two on. It's got to feel good and it's oh, yeah. I guess not Josh Hader's best stuff today. I, I don't know what was quite missing. There was a lot over the plate but the twins certainly were unfazed by a guy who's been shutting down just about everyone for a long time now. Yeah I, I think for me he just missed today his his stuff just wasn't sharp. Um, he wasn't down in the zone as much. You know what also the umpire didn't give him some calls that could have gone his way. The at bat can change. But listen there's no excuses right. I think the Minnesota Twins they 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 took full advantage of it. 
especially out of the opportunity. And man, Miranda, he did not miss. The, the key of the at bat right there, though, was Kepler. Getting that, that rally going, first and second no outs, understanding that Arias was behind Miranda. He was going to get something to hit, and he was ready for it. Game over. Jose Miranda with the three run shot. Oh, and he also had two other hits today a single and an infield hit earlier. Here we are. That was fun. Felt We're the here. pressure late in the game, especially when you're going up against some of the best relievers in Major League Baseball. Scotty Braun, along with the former All Star Yonder Alonso, and we'll have post game interviews, full highlights. We'll hand out the YouTube player of the game trophy. We'll preview what's coming up next on our YouTube slate. A lot to get to. Oh, and of course, do you want all of the mic'd up content from Absolutely. Andrew McCutcheon? All wrapped into a nice bundle <laughs> for you at some point, he too. Was great. We will do that as well. But both of these teams are first place clubs in their respective divisions, and it was an absolute joy to watch from start to finish, which included some very strong back ends of the bullpen, even though Hader did crack, which was rare for him. It also started with two very effective, yet sometimes a little wild on Ashby's side, starters, both very young in Pretty Joe good Ryan defensive and plays. Aaron Ashby. Oh, the with defense Davis. was amazing today. Wong. Correa, the Celestino. Double play, Celestino, just an all-around game. It just really felt like postseason baseball. Mm -hmm. We had it all. We had a packed house too, and we had a walk-off, and a great one from Jose Miranda, who's going to join us soon. But we'll uh, get to him in a moment. You know, he did receive not one but two ice water baths already. Yeah. <laughs> I think his, his comms are might, are, are might mess with the microphone. Right now, yeah. So we'll make sure that he's OK. He but he'll join us in just a few. And I bet we'll have a trophy for him very soon. There he is just waiting to get the OK getting set up. Does he hear us? And he's already dry too, which is amazing. All right. So here's what we'll do. We'll take a quick <laughs> break and then Jose Miranda is coming back with us uh, on the post game show as the twins take down the Brewers by a final score of four to one. Yeah, the playoff field was there for a number of reasons, including not many empty seats in the house oh, today, no. too. Busy, both sides showing up big. Brewers fans, Twins fans, and it was a show. Hot day on a Wednesday in Minneapolis. Hot post game. Fourth what? David. The Minnesota Twins are walk-off winners against the first place Milwaukee Brewers in the National League Central. And the Twins, of course, maintaining their edge in the AL Central. Again, 4-1 your final off of 10 hits. The biggest coming from Jose Miranda. Gilberto Celestino drove in the first run of the day and also made a sweet play on defense. He spoke to Amy G just a couple minutes ago. que de verdad, o sea, los muchachos se enfocaron en cogerle buenos turnos, buenos picheos. Polanco le sacó una tremenda base por bola. Más que Eppler se pudo ajustar a coger un buen picheo que él pueda dominar. Y entonces vino Miranda y también pudo dominar un buen picheo. I think we did a great job uh, working the counts against him. He's a great pitcher. He's difficult to hit. Uh, Polanco took a great at bat. He walked. Uh, Kepler did the same. He he great at bat as well. In the ninth inning, just battling against a good pitcher. And uh, obviously we saw what Miranda did. 
There's a reason Josh Hader is a four-time All-Star. All right, let's get to pitching and defense. You know that's what wins game. Your pitching staff today was excellent in a tight matchup. But let's talk about the D. And you had a vital double play in the ninth. But Gilberto, it was your catch in the fifth. It saved a run. It was a short, short fly ball. Take us through your route and how you timed that. La defensa hoy estuvo fantástica, la, el, la, los lanzadores también. Pero vamos a hablar un poco de la defensa. El doble play en el noveno inning fue vital, pero tú atrapada en el quinto inning. Eh, si puedes hablar un poco de las rutas que tomaste para atrapar esa bola. Dile que sí, que me sentí muy bien, que la ruta que tomé fue cuando la pelota salió, sabía que estaba golpeada hacia adelante, un batazo corto. Y lo que dije fue, o sea, esta bola tengo que atraparla como quiera. Eh, puse todo mi empeño hacia adelante y me lancé y pude atrapar la pelota. When it comes to the route, uh, I had to make like a split decision and I knew the ball was going to be in front of me regardless. So I just took my route and I, I thought to myself I had to dive. I had to get this ball. I cannot let it drop. So that's what, that was my thought process on it. All right, last question for you. It's days before the All-Star break. It's a grind right now. You guys are in first place. It's where every team wants to be. Obviously, you're there because you're playing well. But what is it outside of what happens on the field that's working for this club? Estamos, esos dos equipos están en primer lugar. Nosotros, principalmente nosotros, eh, estamos concentrados. Acabamos de dar un juego como este. Estamos en primer lugar. Muchos equipos quisieran estar ahí, donde estamos nosotros. ¿Qué es lo que funciona? No solamente en el terreno, pero fuera del terreno, en la, en la química que tenemos nosotros, este equipo. Si puedo hablar un poco. Diré que este equipo tiene una tremenda química. O sea, yo solamente veo lo que está fuera del terreno, pero dentro del terreno nosotros hablamos, los veteranos hablan con los, con los novatos. El equipo se mantiene unido. O sea, y nosotros tenemos una sola meta, que es ganar. O sea... Ganar y salir al 100%, jugar defensa bien, poder batear bien y ganar juego. Eso es lo que nosotros queremos ahora mismo. You know, you know, fans and everybody else just see what happens on the field, but we have a great chemistry in the clubhouse, great chemistry as a, as a team. Uh, during the games, we have a lot of veterans on the bench that helps people like me that are trying to establish ourselves in the game. Uh, it's constant communication on and off the field, and I think that's really important, and that's why we are where we are. Okay, Miranda wins the trophy, but you get the painting of the game from Kickley. He made this in like 10 minutes. It's amazing. So let's just show it. Yep. You want to hold that? And your initial thoughts. Que Miranda se ganó el trofeo, pero usted ganaste la foto que dibujó el el señor en vivo. Eh, que cuáles son tus pensamientos iniciales de eso? Que se siente hermosa, se ve muy bien, un tremendo talento que tiene el señor. It looks really good. He's really talented. I love it. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Amy G. And now the champ is here. Jose Miranda joining us live on YouTube, and he is the player of the game, the big trophy. That's got a little weight to it, too. Hey, Jose, first off, congratulations on the dub. We're going to get to the walk-off, the whole deal. Thank you for sticking around for a moment because we always like to keep it real for the audience. Your teammates dumped you with a little ice bath, and it caused some friction with the microphone, but you can hear us good now, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you guys good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Take us through that at bat against one of the best pitchers on the planet and you smashed a home run to the second deck to win this thing. Yeah, I was just trying to get a good pitch. Um, I kind of knew it was going to go off speed because um, he knows. I mean, I pretty much know they know I can hit the fastball. So I kind of knew that we're going to go sliders. He went slider first pitch down um, and I kind of knew it was going to go back again there. So he hung it and then I got to go swing. When, Jose, when you're watching that situation develop, right, understanding who's behind you in Arias, did you understand like, hey, this is my moment right here. This is where I have to produce for my team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I knew I was going to get a good pitch to hit. I had a Raz behind me. I had a couple of good guys behind me. So um, I knew I was going to get a good pitch. And, uh, it, you know, he threw a good one and I got it. I'll say last 30 games, 315, three homers, your on base percentage over 360. Talk to me a little bit about what this month has been like for you because you certainly has turned it around and you are absolutely doing what you've always been doing and that's raking. Um, yeah, I mean, just kept working hard, uh, kept trusting the process, kept trusting my game and, you know, grinding out every day. So um, right now it's <laughs> uh, pain, pain. So, you know, keep grinding. Here's uh -oh. Archer throwing me seats. Archers, yeah. Archers on you. Yeah. Wow, you're getting the, the full gamut today, the full menu from the teammates. Hey, I wanted to say, but I was like, eh, it's his first career walk-off home run. Maybe I'll save it for another time. Not giving away my shot. I don't even know if you know what that means, but your cousin is 
the Hamilton creator, Lin-Manuel Miranda. And Jose, guess what? My sister's actually in that show okay. in New York City that's, on that's Broadway. Awesome. So I wanted to know, because I haven't gotten to talk to you before. You haven't seen the show yet? Lin's got to hook you up with tickets. No, you got to no. go there. I got I to gotta go. I got to go. I haven't been there yet, but I know I'm going to go to uh, one soon, I hope. Yeah, we hope so. And then let us know how it is. Hey, congratulations. Sure. What a moment to Thank walk you. off and win this gracias, thing. Gracias. Gracias. Trophy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. <laughs> and we appreciate you sticking around. Jose Miranda. What a day for him. And then, thank you. I mean, that's the most lopsided player of the game results probably we've ever had. Yeah, Sal rightfully so. Salacino had some good plays, though, too. Oh, he did, but he didn't oh, have the walk-off three-run right homer against oh, the All-Star not, not just the walk-off. It was a mammoth. It was. Upper decker. Second deck at target field. No doubt about it. Jose Miranda, your player of the game with the trophy, which I bet for the first time today. It's heavy. It's awesome. And it's a 4-1. Twins dub. You want highlights of this one? We'll deliver it next. Twins fans heading home super happy after an afternoon sold out. Brewers Twins matchup, the border battle, the Brewers take yesterday. The Twins win today, and here's how it happened. Aaron Ashby, who's coming off the win against the Pirates on Friday, five innings, two runs, three hits, two walks, three strikeouts. And Buxton's down on strikes. That's a good changeup right there. First pitch swing and Carlos Correa dunks one into center and it's the first base runner of the afternoon for either side. Got him. Oh, slider. That's pitch. the swing and miss pitch. Chipped right center and that's going to bounce and bring in the first run for the Twins. Jeffers will score. Celestino makes it 1-0 Minnesota in the second. Remember that curveball, just like the first pitch he threw him in the at bat, stay right through it. Wasn't trying to pull him at all, just using the other side of the field. There's a lot of hits on the other side of the field, especially in RBI situations. Oh boy. Jace Peterson sends a drive to center field, oh. heading yep. back. Season for Jace ties the score at one. That's a fastball up in the zone right there. Good try by Celestino, though. He almost had it. Davis first pitch, and it's falling fast in center. Oh. And caught. Of course, Celestino to the rescue. Off the bat, he knew he had a beat on it. Great play right there. That is up to shoot, hot shot, and Correa's on it. What a tough hop to corral. That's why they signed him up in the offseason. There's a rocket to right. Kyle Garlic's first hit of the day. 
Shot into right center, and Davis chasing, diving on a bounce. He's got it. Keeps it in front of him, and it's a knock for Miranda to move Carlick to second. This is Trevor Gott. What are we working with? Oh, uh, we're going to see a lot of cutters. That's his go-to pitch. Last year, he only used it about 7% of the time. Right now, this is the pitch he likes to throw. It's a cutter for seam curve. Oh, got him. Throws him with heat. Rarely see he that. He struck out looking. He rarely strikes out in general. That one skied off the bat of Jeffers. Great job by Trevor Gott. Here comes Peterson. Side retired. Yeah, Trevor Gott. Brilliant strikeout. Easy pop into right. McCutcheon and Severino on two outs into six. In right and caught by Garlic. Celestino cutting in front of him, and the inning is over. Dick defense. This is us in real life again. Jorge Polanco gives it a ride to center. Jonathan Davis says, I got it. What a Denied. Play. Outstanding. The hell on. <laughs> Next up, Max Kepler. That's a double. And it puts runners at second and third. This was a big chance for the rookie, Jose Miranda. And a pop up. He's going, I'll have my day. That's right. Second see chance. You later. I'll see you later. Brewers bullpen. Ryan Jeffers to Wong. Oh, and he wins the race to second to end the inning. And Brad Boxberger's like, okay. Not a lot of emotion there from Boxberger. He's just like, yeah, I've been there, done that. And gets through the seventh. Fast forward to the ninth. Pedro Severino. It's a double down the line off to Rand. And then with runners on first and second, it's Jace Peterson. And this is one of the better plays of the game for the infield. Arise, Correa, Arise. 363, DP. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. Can the Twins walk off against Josh Hader? That for me was the at bat right there. Max Kepler puts two on. And Jose Miranda says, forget the walk off hit. How about a walk off blast? Man. As soon as he hit it, look at him go. That's right, guys. Game over. Not giving away my shot. Twins win. 4-1. Miranda, easy dub for the YouTube Player of the Game trophy and his eighth home run of the season as the Twins pick up their 49th win of the year. Look how evenly matched with the records these two teams are as well. Minnesota at 49 and 41, and the Brewers at 49 and 40. Scotty Braun, Yonder Alonzo, you want some mic'd up gold? Oh, uh, can't wait to hear this. From Andrew McCutcheon, let's run it. Morning game, baby. Morning. I was about to say, borderline morning game in the show. Morning. Feel like morning. Oh, man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, come on, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. I want to hear all your inner secrets. All your, all your inner secrets. How your arms touch like that? God, dog, on me. How you do that? Ugh. Can't do that. He must. He must have no pectorals. Oh. Oh man, he gave it to me. Goodness. Too early on it. Too early hitting being here. Both. Too early being here. Too early playing, and then too early on that swing. Probably while I was too early on the swing. It holds on to it a little longer than you expect. So it's like, you know, it gets it right here and it's like, and then he lets it go. Oh, shoot. I'm looking at right field. I'm tripping. I do I'm playing. I don't even know where we playing him at. Oh, my goodness. I've been off this whole time. I got it, I got it, I got it. 
Oh, yeah, I didn't say. I said it. I said I got. I got. And I, I saw you. I was like, I ain't gonna say it again. Yeah. Like all right, he don't move. I ain't gonna call it again. Give him the heater, Ricky. Oh, what do you know? Oh, he's a good one. Oh, wait. Change up, dirty. Well, she'd be the main culprit. They almost get hit by the balls in the dugout. First person I thought about right when that ball in the dugout is T O K. Me? Yeah, cause I, I swear you're the culprit for the foul balls. Be right by you every time, like somewhere near. <laughs> Good man, good man, you good? Ooh, I didn't know. Hey, you doing it, man? Hey, keep doing it. Hey, you got three, three hands too. Damn. Hey, man, you gotta stay short, you know. <laughs> I know. Short, quick, have a chance. Hey, man, felicidades in the All Star game, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Right there, bro. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me get one today. I hit one my next at bat on doing it. Bye. Uh, uh. Exactly. Hell yeah. It's next at bat. Uh -huh. I, I do see. it. I'm waiting for that one. I'm doing it. I'm, oh, I'm hitting it. I'm doing it. do that for you get this guy awesome. a clean hat that was uh, beautiful all day long from Andrew McCutcheon and we thank him for hanging out with us and being mic'd up all game long didn't take that mic off for no. a second he was on it ready for curious creators I'm in our creators are uh, youtubers in the live chat asking questions to us and answering them right now number one was peak Andrew McCutcheon more fun than current Byron Buxton wow that's a really hot question to start us off from yeah, stark raving I, sports I think he was you know I, I think what he was doing in his peak was just incredible I mean it was a party when you went to Pittsburgh saw him play every day he had the whole stadium covered in, in like his dreads and how he ran by the way he was running at will all the time he hit for average he had the gold glove but obviously what we're seeing right now with Buxton it is very very special and, and, and it's just something that that it only comes so many times in our game. I'm going to say yes. Peak Andrew McCutcheon, more fun. Yeah, and he was just MVP candidate year after year, won it one of the years, and also just the personality is is vibrant and it's off the charts. Buxton's a little quieter, yeah, right? A little more of a soft-spoken guy. What do the Brewers need to do to get over the hump this season, this one coming from Bryson? It's simple. They just got to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. If they can stay healthy with that pitching core, which, by the way, that pitching core has stayed solid the whole year, if they can do that, they're going to be able to get get some guys up running, like Renfro. He needs to stay healthy. He needs to do his thing. But, look, I, I think for me it comes down to health. If they can stay healthy, they'll be just fine. Another bat or two, I could think. Be. Yeah, yeah uh, the offense, be. I think the numbers are a bit deceiving if we're being real about the Brewers with their offense because a lot of their damage is coming against some pretty yeah. mediocre to subpar pitching from the Pirates and the Reds and, this year. But I will say this, you, you win in the postseason with pitching, and what we're seeing right now with this starting pitching the last two seasons has been phenomenal. I think these guys are going to carry the load, and once come September, when they're playing pivotal games, this is the pitching that needs to step up and they have been. Yeah, Peralta should be back in August. He's doing multi-inning bullpen sessions right now. He had the shoulder issue. What do the Brewers need? Oh, he just did that one. I'm about to be like Anchorman. What do the Brewers need to? <laughs> Here's John. Who will lose the most playing time <laughs> when Miguel Sano comes back? Uh. Ooh. Yeah, where does Sano fit into the mix for Minnesota right now? I don't know if he's necessarily, unless he just goes on a tear, an everyday guy yeah, for them. Yeah, I, I think the situation is going to be, what is the front office going to do? Right, because this is a good problem to have. When you have a slugger like that, somebody's going to call, not only just for him, but maybe for somebody else. We understand the potential that this guy 
can bring to a lineup. It's a potent offense. No stadium can hold Miguel Sano. I, I think it's a good problem for the Minnesota Twins to have, but I also think it's a, it's a chance to upgrade in other needs that they might go to. So this is a, a guy that will play. He'll get his at-bats. Everybody's going to get his at-bats at the end of the day. Everything shuffles the way it needs to be, and good things are going to happen for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that there's somebody that's going to be, quote, replaced. I think he'll just be more a part yeah. of the mix where you'll see someone who's DHing um, give up some at-bats to Sano, but I don't think he's going to be the guy in there every single day. No. Uh, what do these two teams need to add at the deadline to make a deep run for the playoffs, our creator spotlight, Sportstorm. Well, I can already go back to Brewers. I mean, I think they're pretty good on the pitching side of yeah. things. A bat. I, I never have enough pitching, uh -huh. you know, whether it's in the back end of the bullpen or it's a, a starting role. For me, pitching is what I'm always looking forward to. It's what I always want. I, I, you know, the Brewers, I know, can use a center fielder, but yes. there's not that many guys out there. It's not like you can just go out and get there's six center fielders. There's just not that many of them. So for me, it comes down to pitching, possibly a, a, a bat like you were talking about with the Brewers. For me, and, and the Twins is a little bit different. I, I do think they need arms. And the more arms they can get, the better they're going to be. Yeah, definitely a reliever to maybe another starter. I mean, of course, you'd love to see them get one of the big names, but everybody's going for them, right? The Luis Castillos of the world, Frankie Montas, who's going to be back soon from the injured list. So there's a look at what they should be doing. We'll see if that happens. I, I do feel pretty confident Twins will add a pitcher and Brewers will add a bat. Lastly, Zach, biggest breakout team in the second half of the season. Which team is going to surprise us or go on a little run in the second half of the year? Oh, that's a that's a call. really tough call because it's been so good. I like the Orioles, what they're doing. I like what the Mariners are doing. You know mm. what? I'm going to go with the Mariners. I, I think the American League West, they're going to give them, they're going to give a nice little punch uh, to Houston, and, and they're going to try to make a run for this. Yeah, I agree. I, I've liked the Mariners for the last couple years. I've been on that train. I've said, hey, I think this team's going to finally crack the postseason. I said that at the beginning of this year. Even when they were struggling a bit, I still said I like this team as a potential playoff squad. And right now, they're on a huge run. I agree with you. I think that can continues in the second half of the year. I think they have room to spend money to pick up assets, and they have prospects to be able to acquire those assets. So oh, and they're going to do agree it. With they, you. They've been doing it's it. Time. They've always done it. They have that window. I think it's time. It's time. Yeah, it's 2001 is the last time they made it to the playoffs. So that, that one makes a lot of sense. And we will see Seattle on August 17th. How about that? 4 o'clock Eastern. J-Rod and the Mariners against Otani. Before that, you have the Astros hosting the Rangers. And then look what we have in two weeks. Same matchup, border battle. Just flip the home team with the road team. The Milwaukee Brewers will host the Twins on the 27th. So we are storming back right after the All-Star break with that matchup from Milwaukee. Tailgate time, July 27th, 1.30 Eastern, when our pregame coverage gets started. For my dude, Yonder Alonzo. Oh, Kickley, thank you very much, the great Amy G the all-star crew as we hit the all-star break. Scott Braun logging out for now as the Twins walk off the Brewers 4-1. Jose Miranda is the man to put on the show. And I'm logging off. See you soon from our lovely home right here on YouTube.